Shut up and sit down. Hello and welcome to another episode of Build, Paint, Play. I'm Dave. Greetings, programs. I'm Jake, uh, and we are joined today by uh, Terrace Cassidy from uh, Geek Nation Tours, and he's going to explain <laughs> what all that is afterwards. For those of you who aren't in the know, uh, Dave and I, I think, have experienced his his handiwork at Adepticon, and I believe I know I know you've done at least one other show that I go to, but I can't remember which one it is. Gen Con. Gen Con, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, Gen that makes Con. sense. Yeah. Yep. And I, and I have experienced much more, much more. That's right. He has. It'll be in the story. It'll it'll be in the. We'll tell stories about it later. Is what I'm trying to say. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. <laughs> All good. <laughs> but yes. I'm excited. Excited about reminiscing. Yep. It'll be uh, definitely cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, everybody. Uh, so um, before we jump into that, uh, a couple of things we want to do. First is uh, say. Thank you very much to our season sponsor, the Army Painter. Um, thank you very much, Army Painter. Uh, very cool. Uh, just quickly, um, I did manage to find an image. Oh, wow, wow. Like that. That's see. Did you get a pin? Yeah. Where'd them. you get your pin from? Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I think. I, I think Adam gave it to me at, at uh, Gamma, I think. Nice. That's cool. I'm just going to uh, switch to show um, our... This is our new mascot for the uh, show. Uh, the Army Painter, Penny. Yeah, it needs to be Penny. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> it'd be quite nice that we've got that uh, it is uh, nice. happening. But uh, yeah, and I was also looking at um, getting like looking at enamel pins today to see about like getting an enamel pin made for the show with Penny as part of that. That'd be pretty rad. It would be we, super yeah, rad. Maybe they can give us like a branded build, paint, play uh, Penny. That'd be awesome. Oh, that'd be sweet. 
<laughs> Excellent. Um, we'll say uh, hi to everybody in the chat. Uh, hi, Scott. Hi, Chris. Uh, hi, Josh from Crown of Command. Uh, Dave hey, Josh. Hall is here. Jez is here. Hey, Jez. Jim's here. Josh is here. Uh, awesome. Fantastic. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We will uh, get to answering a bunch of your questions about Adepticon later in the show. Scott, I think it's probably the last tour that, that we'll talk about. But, um, yep, it should be uh, a fun show. Um, I realized, of course, that I should have transitioned to this screen so that when you saw me talking about it, you could see me talking about it. Uh, but the next... Um, thing I wanted to quickly talk about was uh, Dead Earth Games. Uh, so Stephen May is a guy who used to sculpt for uh, GW and for Forge World. Uh, has a Kickstarter going on at the moment. Um, this isn't a paid spot or anything like that, but I'm super excited about these uh, retro recon models. Uh, I think the uh, campaign's called the Imperial Crusade Recon Squad. Um, there's a link to it down in the notes below, uh, and you can check them out if you enjoy your old school uh, scout models. These are uh, fantastic looking uh, looking models. Super cool. Yeah, they're they're literally. I mean, they are, but they're not. They're the Space Crusade ones. They are. It's the, yep. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's the box that came with t uh, Ultramarine scouts and Tyranid warriors, the old dog face warriors yep. with the, the figure eight bodies and like the multiple arms and stuff. Yep. Uh, and like the old, I love that they were altering scouts, but they had like tribal tattoos and like mohawks and like yeah, the mohawk. Like, like and they had like the weird like epaulette the, sleeves. The, oh, the, and the, the puff and slash. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, they're crazy. Like. Yep. But these look fantastic. really kind of ganger esque too, but space marine too. It's kind of a cool, cool vibe for sure. Dave, did he did he sculpt the original Space Crusade ones? No. No, he okay. did not. All right. um, These are just inspired by those. Yeah, something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, something that I was super surprised to find out, though, is that Andrew May of Meridian Miniatures, who I backed like probably a dozen of his, his Kickstarters, he's done some fantastic um, sort of weird and wacky stuff, uh, including a whole bunch of um, Hieronymus Bosch inspired models. Hieronymus Bosch's um, Garden of Earthly Delights painting which is just full of the most wild and ridiculous sort of um, surrealistic stuff. Um, made some miniatures of that. So I think that was the box that just arrived um, yesterday. But uh, yeah, super cool stuff. But those two guys are brothers, Andrew May and Stephen May, surprisingly enough, are brothers and nice. uh, doing awesome sculpting. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to let folks know uh, they can check that out. And uh, Brian May, the guitarist from Queen, is their older brother, I believe. I, I think so. No, it might be their uncle. I think he's their uncle. Right. Yeah. Nice. That's pretty rad. <laughs> Definitely good. Uh, cool. Um, They're spectacular. So just checking in there. Um, Josh says, the Ultramarines box game was my first GW game after HeroQuest. And I loved it. Plastic Scouts are still my favorites. Yeah, hopefully you've checked out that um, that Kickstarter. Because it is, um, it is very cool. And it's chugging along nicely. I think it's got about five days to go. So you can check the link. Yeah, he's killing it. They were looking to raise like fourteen hundred bucks or something, and they're already at like twenty four grand. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty crazy. Um, definitely cool. It is a crazy thing, Kickstarter, isn't it? Well, it is. It is wild. It, it, the The biggest thing that my Kickstarter always weirds me out is like some some companies use it the right way. It's like, oh, it's a small <laughs> company, or they're using it as a startup because it's like we don't have the capital to do it. We, but is there enough interest to justify this? Which I really appreciate. When big companies that are already established use it, I'm just like, what are you guys doing wrong with your bottom line that you have to use Kickstarter? Like, like what? Did you <laughs> like, yep. like, what did you misspend on that you need to use Kickstarter? Like, you're an existing company. If it's a company that's retooling, like, I get it. Like, I think the first hey. Catalyst, when Catalyst did it and they added Battle, like, like they brought Battletech back. I get it. The miniatures are the most expensive thing, so I, I understand you had to like retool. Like that, I get. But they like obliterated their Kickstarter. It was like we're looking to raise like one hundred eighty thousand dollars, and they raised like two point one million dollars or something. And I was like, it was like four awesome. million or something. Like that. <laughs> it's so it's such a the the numbers are outstanding. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's just like yeah, mind boggling. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
Excellent. Yeah, but that um, one looks great. I'm, I'm super excited for those models. They, they look they look pretty great. No, definitely good. Yes. Uh, Jez great. says, uh, I got some great medieval demons for, off Andrew May the other day. He's got a Kev Adams proper Space Orc pirate Kickstarter up at the moment. Oh, cool. So definitely nice. look for Meridian Miniatures on Kickstarter and check out the uh, Kev Adams Ooh. proper Space Orc pirates. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, so next up, we've got uh, hobby, hobby stuff. Um, Jake, what have you been up to hobby wise? I uh, I packed up my hobby. You packed up your hobby. You packed yeah, up your I Alpha Omega, it. and uh... yeah, and I moved it down the street. <laughs> and today I spent, uh, I I think today I spent basically like six hours unboxing and putting up all of our RPGs. We we carry like I think we carry close to a hundred different RPGs. Yep. Oof. So I spent like eight. I spent like eight hours like organizing and putting up new fixtures and taking everything out of the boxes and moving stuff around. And then I had a bunch of volunteers who were putting the board games back together, which is which is great and super helpful. And like our our community has been awesome. We've had so many people that have helped out. Uh, the only thing I really hired movers for was like all like the big heavy stuff, like our war gaming tables and stuff like that. Um, but I know over the next like two weeks, I'm gonna have to touch everything in the store because. Yep. I'm just type A enough to know how exactly how I want the board games, and they're not like that. So I'm gonna have to like <laughs> every time you walk off. by, you're gonna be like, "Yep, oh yeah, it's gonna make me." What? <laughs> Fantastic. So, so you're you're moving then? Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So I I will I will give you guys the quick rundown. Tell this us the story. Give us the quick rundown. That, that a lot of the community didn't get to hear. So, yep. we've been in our current location for we've been open for six and a half years. We've been we've been in the same building the entire time. So initially we were supposed to have a big space. The guys in the building completely misunderstood, or at least they said they did. So we signed it at least in I think March or April, and then set up our website and did a bunch of like social media and like networking to let people know we we're gonna be opening, and then we did a bunch of like pop-up events, and then we started taking pre-orders, and this was to coincide for the Dark Imperium. 7th edition, uh, or 8th edition uh, box set for 40k. Right. Like, we, yeah. we timed our release to be our opening day. Uh, we had a ton of pre-orders. It was awesome. We did a couple of, like, kind of, like, luncheon meetups at, like, random places and get people excited. So we go back to the building, do our pop-up shop, and then we go back the next day, and I'm like, hey, so can we get our keys? Like, we're supposed to open in two weeks. And the guy goes, what are you talking about? And I went, the lease that we signed? And he goes, yeah, I thought you guys were, I thought we were custom designing something for you guys downstairs. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, well, that's going to take more than two weeks. And I was like, which is why we had this conversation three months ago. And he was like, oh, like, obviously he had a miscommunication with whoever the property manager was. And it was never like communicated. So we ended up opening back up in our pop-up shop location, which is like 1300 square feet, maybe. I mean, it's tiny. Um, so we were there for, they were like eh, three months which turned into 14 months. Then we moved downstairs into our new space. It's huge. It's like, it's supposed to be four, just over 4,000 square feet. We move in. It's in the, it's in the, like the middle of the end of the summer. We move in. I pay for flooring, get all that stuff done, you know, order fixtures, get everything moved up. At the end of the year, I pay the balance on the flooring. And I was like, wow, we got a great deal. So then I find out that it's because the owners at the building didn't they shorted us on square footage we're supposed to be the the blueprint in our lease says 4250 and there's a blueprint drawn of our square footage so i talked to the flooring guy and he goes it's it's maybe it's maybe three it's just over three thousand square feet i was like really he goes if i round up like i mean if i round up by like 50 feet it's maybe 3100 square feet square feet <laughs> so i go back to the building and it turns into this whole like well you guys are paying for like shared usage in the building. So like the main entrance and the lobby and the elevators and the restrooms. And I was like, uh, I mean, okay, but like, where is that in my lease? And he's like, Oh, it's pretty industry standard. So my what? lawyer is like, I shouldn't have to tell you that if it's not in the lease, it doesn't matter. Like that's not how contracts work. <laughs> my lawyer's like, well, let me go back to the owners. Like, I'm just telling you what I've been told. So this goes on for like, probably six or eight months and at first it's like no we never said that and then oh there must have been a miscommunication and you know what could we do and then COVID hits and they're like well we can't do anything now anyways and i was like okay that's fine like we've already been here like uh, there's no rush like we're not moving so 
we come back after COVID, there's a new property manager. And I'm starting from scratch. And he's like, oh, what's going on? So I go through all this stuff. This takes like two years or about a year back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it's a lot of like, well, we've already done everything we can. And I was like, have you though? Because it doesn't seem like you've done anything. So finally, our lawyer's like, listen, you guys are just going to owe us the square footage difference. Like you, you can either like we have a five year lease. So either we'll pay full price for four years. And then our last year is essentially free because you've shorted us 20 percent or you guys can give us the square footage or we can work something out like we're happy to, to you know, comply. You just need right. to let us know what we're doing. So their new lawyer starts talking to our lawyer and this goes back and forth for like another six months. And then all of a sudden he goes radio silent. And we're like, that's weird. And my lawyer's like, well, maybe he's figuring stuff out. So now I get an email from the bank saying that we're going to change the address of our payments to a new company. So we found out they sold the building to another group. I sit down with the new group day one and I'm like, this is what's going on. This is what we've been dealing with. And they're like, I'm so sorry to hear that. Obviously we want to work this out. You guys are great clients. You've been here for five years at this point. Like we want to keep you. I was like, sounds great. So over the last, I would say eight months, it's been us agreeing to blow out a wall and our square footage would go from 30, like whatever, 3000, whatever to just shy of 8,000 square feet. We would be the biggest store in the Northeast. You'd have to go to like games and stuff in Baltimore to find a bigger store. So we're super excited about this and they're thrilled because like we're technically in a garden level. So like from the sidewalk, you can see us, but you go downstairs to get into our building. So after all that, they're like, yeah, you guys are all set. I'm like, cool. He's like, did you sign the contract? And I was like, uh, yeah, I looked through it. Like you guys didn't put anything about like bringing it up to code and like you guys have to do the build out. Like right now it's unfinished. You need to bring it up like our side was and we'll just, we'll just connect it. Like we'll do all the demo and all that stuff. That's on us. And he's like, oh, we agreed on as is. And I was like, we definitely did not. We agreed on a price and the size. And you guys said that that was cool. It's your building. You need to do that work. Like <laughs> the fire needs to be updated. The electro grid needs to be updated. Uh, it needs like new lighting and it needs the HVAC needs to be serviced and updated. And he's like, well, yeah, I mean, your, your contractor could do all that. And I was like, I mean, he probably could, but again, I'm not doing any of that until this is all signed and it's legal. So then it's like, well, you guys can get permits. We cannot. I had the city inspector come by and he's like, none of this is on you guys. You guys are not liable for any of this. It's the building owners. So this goes back and forth over the last couple of weeks. And then finally they start, they start trying to get us to like, they're trying to like force us to sign. So they're like, well, your lease is coming due at the end of the month. <clears throat> You're gonna have to sign that new lease. And I was like, no, I don't. We have a three year extension. And he's like, well, I mean, if we want to fix this, this whole thing. And I was like, we do. I'm like, but it, the onus is on you. Like you guys are basically supporting a, a lease that is, that is invalid because the original owner screwed it up. We have not done anything wrong. This is on you. And he's like, well, so again, months of this. So finally they threaten us with, uh, they're like, well, you have to be out by the end of the month. And I was like, again, I don't, we have an extension. And their lawyer goes, you don't have an extension. And I, so I call my lawyer and I'm like, am I crazy? He goes, yeah, I'm looking at your lease right now. You have a three-year extension. I go, okay. So I email their lawyer back and I'm like, Hey, we have an extension. We're just going to activate it. He goes, oh, you, you can't activate it at the last minute like that. So I call my lawyer back and he goes, I don't know if this guy's actually a lawyer or if he's just really confused or if he's like still <laughs> in school. He's like, but you don't need to do anything. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, so a normal lease, it's whatever the lease is. And if it has an extension, it's not a new lease. It just extends the lease. He's like, so unless in the last six months, they've told you that you guys are in violation and they're kicking you out of the building for something that they would be able to show, or you said, we're going to leave. All you have to do is pay that next month's rent and it just kicks in. It just extends it. So I'm like, all right. So their lawyer doubles down and goes, you don't have an extension. And even if you did, you can't activate at the last minute. So he's like, you have to either sign the new lease or be out of the building by the end of the day. So my lawyer's like, you don't need to do anything. Just ignore him. I'm like, okay. So I come home. I'm super frustrated. I talk to my wife. She goes, you should just get out of that building. You've had nothing but trouble with that building, regardless of who owns it. So our landlord, our, our realtor found a place two blocks up the street from where we are, closer to city center, way better location, street front. It's a historical building. It'll never get torn down. Um, but again, 
we found this out basically black going into Black Friday weekend, and I was like, this oh, no. is insane. Like, <laughs> it, it, like it, this couldn't be like May first, and we'll just close for ten days. Like, it, it's it's been it's been insane. So that's been my life. So our community has been awesome. We've had a ton of people show up to like move stuff for us, and we've been like army anting it back and forth. But right now the because the new store is technically smaller it's like a couple hundred square feet smaller but it's a right. way better layout but right now we've taken all of this stuff that we had including stuff we had in storage and we brought it over to the new building and it's like it's like taking your entire house and putting it into a dorm room like there's <laughs> no one to move around like i'm just like where are we gonna put all this stuff so that's been my week is me dealing with comcast and movers and getting the painters done i will say that the guys who really is floor, a nightmare the guys who did our floors were awesome. Yeah. So I called the guy who installed our floors and I was like, hey, I want to set something up so before we move in, you can install new floors. And he goes, right. why don't you just take your floors with you? And I went, what? He goes, you guys bought top of the line, luxury vinyl, you know, commercial grade flooring that has a 10 year life. He goes, you've had it for five, almost five years. He's like, just take it with you. And I was like, we can do that. He's like, yeah, we'll just rip it up. So the, those guys showed up at our shop. It was like these six or seven guys from from central and south america and they were awesome <laughs> they were so good they were like the christmas elves we were like this is going to take them all day they were done in two hours they just kept moving stuff around and you know, ripping it up and moving stuff around and ripping stuff up it was like pulling the tablecloth out from underneath the you know the, 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 the <laughs> and then they they did it in two days they did that on wow. wednesday last week they ripped it up and then they went over and started prepping the floor and then one of my buddies lives in downtown Quincy and was like, hey, there's guys in your store. And I was like, on Thanksgiving? He's like, yeah. He goes, it looks like they're doing the floor. So I called the guys and I was like, please tell me you guys aren't working on Thanksgiving. He's like, we're just here for four hours. We're just doing the surfacing. I was like, please tell me your guys are going to get home and, and have dinner with your, with your families. He's like, yeah, yeah, we're going to get out of here in a minute. But they did all that so that on Friday, they just did the whole floor. And they stayed late. They were awesome. Yep. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. So, what does your the past guys say about you moving the floor? Oh, I don't care. It's my floor. <laughs> I don't think I don't think they have any idea. If it was up to me, if it was up to me, out of spite, I would take all the light bulbs. I would take so everything. I take all the outlet you, did, you said you said that you did the lighting. So. I mean, I, I would literally take everything. I would leave them. <laughs> I, I would I would put a, a tuna fish sandwich in the middle of the room. And lock the door. Just leave it there. Like it's like the Grinch on uh, the Grinch who stole Christmas. Like all just wires hanging down, and you've taken yeah. this. You know, you've yep. obviously taken the Christmas tree. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, it's 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 been it's been nuts. It has been absolutely insane. And, and again, all of this is contracted. I was like, we have a lease. Like all of this is spelled wow. out. But yeah. Wow. I mean, so, so what you're saying is you that's... you haven't painted any models. <laughs> I have not. Okay. Right Just I, have, to check. I have moved. To check. I have touched a ton of models, <laughs> uh, but I haven't painted any. But they're all still in their boxes. So that doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. We, had, we had a bunch of those glass pieces. <laughs> yeah. like, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't think Dave has been to my shop, but we have a yeah. we have one of the two Archeons that Duncan Rose painted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. That's cool. So, oh, right. Dave. In 21. So, so, yep. So we have, yeah. we have a we have an archeon that, that Duncan Rose painted. So obviously we very carefully packed that up to take it to the new store. Yep. Um, right. But yeah, it's just been it's been nuts. It's been it's been insane. Yep. No, that's great. That, awesome. That is clearly insane. Yep. <laughs> that All right. So that was that's been that's been my uh, that's my been I, like I, like I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, my hobby. I'll just do quickly. I've been painting up um, Space Marines. For the uh, Tale of Four Warlords that we're working on, must be nice, Dave. Must be nice. Uh, it is it's super nice. I'm telling you. Um, so I've painted up a bunch more. Um, well, I say a bunch more. Three more uh, suppressors. I got my... Did you do did you did you camo in them? No, 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 no. They're all the gray. Oh, it's just it was a shadow on his like left grieve. It looked like you painted like a digi camo pattern. Right. No. No. I'm not doing that. I'm not going that that wild and crazy. And I've got the uh, Apothecary Biologus underway as well. Nice. With his Very kiss nice. boots on. What's that? With his kiss boots? Yep. Mighty kiss boots. They're huge. Those boots are enormous. Uh, so, yeah, that's looking pretty good. They should all be um, be done. Uh, coming up, though, uh, this coming weekend, I'm going to be at PAX Unplugged in Philadelphia. So cool. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, come see me at the um, Game Envy booth. 
uh, and we can hang out. And I'm going to take some Space Marines along with me. I'm also going to take some, um, probably some Cities of Sigma stuff and a couple other models just to have some variety. Uh, but it should be fun. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Very cool. And just quickly, um, jumping into the chat, uh, the, originally, I'm, I'm not sure if you saw it. Uh, oh, sorry. Sean Gleason is here. Mark Maxey's here. Hi, guys. Uh, Jeff has just arrived. Hi, Jeff. Um, but uh, Scott said that your basement setup terrace looked pretty cool. Oh, nice. I said it is that, not a basement. No, it is not a basement. basement. It is uh, on the upper floor. It, I, is, I, it is up. It's a, it's a loft above the garage. As a matter of fact, we used, what we did, we, I live in an acreage. So what we we did is we built this section right here, so yep. this building area and the basement, which is uh, we used as a kitchen and a and our living room, and uh, then four years later we built the rest of the house, which was this way. Okay. So um, nice. this is about priorities, priorities. You're like game room first. And <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, actually, none of this was here when we lived here. Like where I'm sitting was was where our bed was. My table was always there, and all this bookshelf stuff was not there. This is it, I'm talking about flooring. Like this is this is hardwood, of course, but back then it was just plywood. So um, we uh, uh, we lived in here for four years with the very minimum of what we could do, saving uh, for our house. So that's that's how we did it. So this is above ground. Uh, that door is arched on the top. I don't know if you can see that. Can yeah, you, you yeah, can see it. Right you can kind of see it. That door is uh, arched that way because the roof line, as it goes into the house, needed to be arched. So that door wasn't even there. We had a stairs right here going down to the base, to the to the garage area that is now the ground. Right. So it's above ground. Terrace, where do you, where it's you just live? really dark because I am in Canada and it gets dark around. Terrace, where are you in Canada? Uh, just outside of Jasper, Alberta. So Hinton, Alberta is called, and it's about 40 minutes from the park gates. Or not even, actually, 20 minutes from the park. Yep. So yeah, we're. I see an, the Rockies. Right, uh, are you an life. Oilers fan or a Flames fan? Oh, <laughs> I am a geek. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm the black sheep of the family. Actually, my my family loves hockey. My dad, uh, back in the day, he coached Mark Messe when he, <laughs> he when he uh, when he was uh, a, a kid. Actually, and my uncle coached him when he was uh, uh, a. Um, uh, Juniors, I think, when they when they won the Stanley Cup back in the eighties, they brought the Stanley Cup to my uh, my uncle's place. And, That's crazy. And the whole bit. So yeah, it's like we're a huge hockey family, but I'm not. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 there I, goes I, Terrace with his comic books yet again. Like, see, I, see, I did I did both. My my wife says it all the time. My wife's like, you're like this weird. She's like, you're like this weird <laughs> hybrid. nerd shock hybrid. And I was like, really? She's like, I don't think that's a really big thing. But the more I talk to people, I know a lot so of people many like friends that. who play who do both. It's just not something, yeah. I guess there's nothing we talk, because like you're, yeah. usually your crowds are separate. You, you, you keep like, them apart. Well, I, we used to have to do that back in the day, granted, I think. we had. I, yeah. I mean, now it doesn't matter. No. Any, every, I don't think if you said I read comics at the in the hockey room, anybody would, would bat an eye. Back in the day, it was, a, it was an issue, I think, that we had to keep it kind of separated see all, all my like i have a bunch of friends in the military and they were telling me that like they were telling me that they got into warhammer because like i have a couple friends in the navy or yeah. they used to be in the navy and it'd be like well we're stuck on a boat for like you what know what are we gonna do <laughs> and i was like yeah that makes sense so they were like you know building kits and sure. stuff so uh they would come home and like grab stuff to like stockpile to take with them right <laughs> i'm like that makes sense like yeah, I it completely actually, makes sense yeah. Uh, and then all the I I knew a bunch of guys on traveling hockey teams, and they would say that they would play D and D on stuff because oh, it's like, that hey, we're all going to be on a bus, and we're going to drive to the middle of nowhere, and right. there's a there's a um, there's a curfew, so we can't like go out anywhere. So they would like right. hang out in the hotel rooms, usually play the D &D. night after a game, right? And they would like they would hang out and play, and I was like, yeah, again, that all makes sense. Like completely again. makes sense. Yeah, that, for <laughs> sure. I mean, what do you need? You need a handful of dice and uh, yeah. and a book. Yep. That's there's, it. You don't there's even need great, a book. There's that great photo. I think it's in a white dwarf. It's those those guys that are deployed in Afghanistan and they're playing Warhammer on like the hood of a on like the hood of a car <laughs> with like white rocks and black rocks. They're using an oil stick as like their measuring. That's the, that's the measuring. Yeah, I've never seen that. Cool. that. That's super. Really, that's super cool. I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I think that back in the day we had to keep it separated, but I don't. I think that there's a lot of 
sports geeks that are are model geeks too. So, yep. I mean, I, and I, I've I, been corrected. That's how I stay in shape. I stay in shape by playing hockey. I get a game on Friday. <laughs> that's good. I'm, I'm a goaltender, so. Oh really? So you get you've ha- you have fast objects coming at you all, all yep. the time. Yeah, Teaching myself cool. not to move was. Uh, <laughs> to move, that's it's right. A, it's a difficult skill to unlearn. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Because fl- flinching will save your life. Yeah. <laughs> that's normally, right. Normally, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Scott says, uh, Hinton, attaboy, over here, over here in Saskatoon. That's, uh, oh, wow, that's cool. And then he said, um, yeah. my dad arrested Lanny McDonald five times back in the day. Oh, right. <laughs> he, was the, he, was the, he was the cat of the flames for like a long time. Awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. With, with his great giant mustache. Yeah. Thanks for explaining oh, yeah. that. He I was a like, great player, too. I'm, really I'm sure, he was a, sure he was a hockey sure. player, but I couldn't have told yeah. you uh, anything more. Yeah. But no, awesome. Yeah. With the big, big redhead, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. He was yeah, a ginger. Yeah. I do have to comment on the chat here. Where was that? To Ross in Klingon. I love that. I'm going to use that. Excellent. To Ross, son of Tomok. Today I is like it a lot. I should bring. I should go and take a look at my bring my uh, my Klingon jacket. Maybe I'll go running. Yeah. Yeah. Is your um is your batleth still uh, hanging above you? Yeah, the batleth is right there. <laughs> right. <laughs> As long as and the Klingon uh, disruptors right there too, so yeah, Excellent. for sure. I'm a huge Star Trek fan, so uh, yep. that really caught my eye. I, I appreciate that a lot. Nice, awesome. Yes. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Okay. Well, um, Tara sent us through a bunch of uh, photos. So obviously, in the background, um, we can see that there are two tables set up. Um, yep. We've got some photos from the one that is on our left, Terrace's right. Uh, first up. So this is from your um, Frostgrave Archipelago, uh, Ghost, Arpe- uh, Ghost Archipelago. Ghost Archipelago. Yes, right. Ghost Archipelago table. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I think the first uh, image that we've got coming up is the uh, the T Rex overlooking the um, the falls. Right. Um, tell us about your love of uh, Frostgrave. Ghost yeah, Archipelago. Frostgrave. I. Uh... I kind of graduated. I, I still love all things GW. All that there's a lot of 40k back there on my shelves. Um, I just thought, as I got older, I thought the game was a little bit too much game for me, and so I moved. I was looking for something that had a little bit more skirmish and uh, skirmish level, and and I came across Frostgrave, and I realized that it was not only skirmish. But it also had an RPG element to it, to it, and I did a lot of soul searching back then, and I discovered I think that I'm more of an RPG gamer than I am a, a large mass battles miniature war gamer, and so it really grabbed me. I spent a year building terrain, uh, just of uh, just terrain for the game, and then we played. So uh, I really loved create environments worlds and and have one more adventure that's really my my jam although that is going to change we can talk about that later but, <laughs> um and ghost archipelago also came by my uh i was talking to joe mccullough who, who does this he and i've become quite close and we we actually did a frostgrave tour to estonia uh, at one point which was spectacular uh again we can talk about that later yep. But uh, he, I said, what is this uh, uh, Ghost Archipelago? Because I, th- I thought it was like pirates. And I'm not a big pirate guy, like uh, uh, Black Cloud Powder and all that. But he said, no, it's Sinbad. And I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. So that, that old Harry Housen stop motion Sinbad movie type of thing. And I loved that when I was a kid. And um, as a matter of fact, I think that that started me down Dungeons and Dragons is that I had... Uh, Harry Housen to to blame for that in the first place. So uh, anyway, so uh, when Ghost Archipelago, uh, when I graduated to Ghost Archipelago, I built this particular set all through COVID, and um, just love that whole feel of adventure, uh, leveling up between adventures, and uh, just having that you know the old dinosaurs in the background coming fighting a cyclops and. And all that crazy stuff that happened in those old, those movies, and uh, really love that game too. So that's yeah, that's how I got to uh, this particular setup. 
we, we talked about this a little bit last week. Malev was talking about how he really likes those those minis. Like I forget who, I forget, it's all the Osprey minis. I forget who, or it's North Star. No, right? North Star, who, yeah, North Star, yeah. Um, yeah, Osprey is always hilarious to me because like they do so much like peanut butter jelly stuff where they're like, "This is us," but also we're working with so and so. And you're like, "Okay, cool." Right. Um, it like I think there should be more of that in our industry. Like it's kind of a thing that's dying. Everybody wants to do it on their own, and I'm like, stick to what you're good at. Get a part of yeah. the their thing. Like you know, I'll I'll take care of the peanut butter. Paris will take care of the jelly. Like we can make a whole thing. You know what I mean, like it's, it's like why would you? You don't need to do it all. Um, but he was talking about those kits last week, and I was saying like I love the Knowles, but from the the Ghost Archipelago stuff, the Snake Men are like so oh yeah cool. for sure. Uh the 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 tribal the tribal members like that tribal box guys like, yeah all that stuff's awesome. Those, those yeah, exactly. Awesome. And it and it creates this whole uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark vibe. But and the Snake Man are really give you a, a a different villain because villains you always try to relate to villains, but the Snake Man are like this mysterious bunch of uh, uh, civilization that has fallen, and you don't really know. But obviously they're Snake Men, so they must be the completely evil, most evil thing, sacrificing humans and that kind of thing. So, so uh, yeah, those those Frostgrave, I mean, uh, those uh, North Star miniatures are spectacular. The kits are super adaptable. You can change them so much. And uh, what's also great about it is that um, th the structure of the game allows for you, and Joe has said this many times, uh, rules are kind of just, are just, I don't know, make-believe stuff that the designer writes. So you can change whatever rule doesn't you don't like. And so as a community <coughs> they, uh, ab about it that changes the rules to whatever they like it to be. So often you see a rule online and you're like, you know, that's a great rule change. I'm going to incorporate that. I don't like that one, but I like this one. And same with the miniatures too. Uh, what's one of the things that really grabbed me about the Frostgrave products, all the, you know, Stargrave and Frostgrave and all that other stuff, yeah, it's all uh, sil sil silver bayonet is that it is miniatures agnostic. So you can really go, you know what? I really like the Reaper uh, Cyclops, but I like the, North Star uh, Warband guys. So you can really kind of pick and choose. And that, that's what I really, the, there's an nostalgia for that type of thing because back in the day, we we had all these, we had, you know, quite a few companies, but we really had this choice of moving from one place to another miniature wise, too. Yep. Speaking of that, um, just. <laughs> The there you go. Knowledge. That's awesome stuff, man. That's a really I found awesome. That. I found it the other day. I was like, "Oh my god, this is awesome!" <laughs> yeah, that is super cool. I love that a lot. Je Jez wanted to know who the rotting T Rex is. I, that's the Gale Force Nine one, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That's the. Is that up? I didn't even see it come up. Yeah, that's 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 one of the. That's Gale Force Nine. That's the one that I. Uh, that's the miniature that I. Oh, just recently finished. I've got a couple things that are almost finished, but that is the um, my latest uh, paint. Right Some yeah. awesome minis that I think you could use in, in this game or anything that's miniatures agnostic is all yeah. of the Steam Forge epic encounters boxes for D D. Good they stuff. They are yeah. so good. Yep. The new two headed yeah. dinosaur is incredible. Some of you yeah. like, oh, he, but he has all this extra stuff. I was like, right, because it's like 12 year old me was like, What's your favorite dinosaur? It's a Triceratops. <laughs> and they're like, Cool, let's make him a T-Rex. And then Matt, who owns Steamforge, was like, that's pretty cool, but what if he had two heads? Two heads. Like, <laughs> that's and then he has like the Ankylosaurus tail with like the bone, like right, the, right, the, right. You know? And then he has like spikes on his on his back. Like they Absolutely. were like, let's give him all of the cool dinosaur stuff. Well, this is all I actually have one of their one of their kits. I have the snake, the big gigantic snake. Oh, that's oh yeah, cool. that snake. I tell you, I've got that snake is amazing on yeah. my shelf. That's like yeah. that's like a, that's a Conan snake. That's that's like yeah, that's right. Break the tower and kill the snake. That's that snake. Yeah, that's exactly it. Exactly. And, and that's that's what's cool about it is that you can just mix and and match and and the one that really sings to you, you get paid. So, yeah. Yep. It really, as a miniature person, that's the, that's the best of both worlds. I was going to say uh, as well um, for Terrace's uh, Ghost Archipelago setups. Uh, we, he took some photographs for me, and uh, they are included in the uh, the tremendous tome of epic dungeons. So it's yes. super cool. That Thank you for that. Like that, that, that was quite an honor. That, <laughs> that was, was quite an honor to be. Put those up on the window today, Dave. Pardon? You just put those up on the window. 
those up in the window. Oh, yeah. uh, there you go. First out of the box. Dave Taylor's first out of the box. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's super cool. Thank you. Um, yeah. Scott asks, uh, going from GW to Frostgrave games, how long did it take you to get over the fact that o really only your wizard levels up and the rest of the squad doesn't get XP? I struggled with that for a while. Oh, I'm, um, I'm okay with that. You know what? I'm okay with disposable guys. So <laughs> uh, uh, that's one of the charms, I think, that you're the real person uh, that you have investment is that wizard so when you have to roll if he gets injured and you have to roll to see if he dies like really really dies it's kind of scary it's really scary and then leveling up you can give you know your guys the odd uh uh magic weapon or something like that and if they die you lose the magic weapon so you do have a little bit of an investment but i like the idea that this guy is just hiring yeah eons and he doesn't he doesn't really care about them at all <laughs> Yeah, like you're, you're like, like you were saying, it's it's like an RPG. That, that yeah, that's right. That character, and then these that's are right. Like minions that he hires. Yeah, these are like non-player characters. They don't really matter. You know what I mean? Like they're. <laughs> you can, I I always gave them my guys' names. I always give them names, no matter who they are. So when they die, you feel a little bit of remorse, but not not nearly as bad as when your when your wizard or your apprentice is up up against the the wall. That's pretty scary, actually. <laughs> Oh, so. Joe, Joe died. Well, let's go and hire Joe's brother, Joe Two. Yeah, Joe Two. <laughs> um, <laughs> looking back at the looking back at the uh, the chat, I do want to thank uh, Jazz and Chronic Command for like you know, all the congrats and stuff. I, I'll I'll put up new photos once we move and stuff. But yeah, it's been it's been yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Jazz, as far as I know, I was not cursed by a witch. So, no. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> you uh, uh, well, you may well be, but you, yeah. As I far mean, as you again, know. if it is a curse, it's we seem to keep landing on our feet. That's right. like, it's like, it's like, oh, well, you guys have got to be in this building. Oh, man, I don't want to move. And they're like, well, it's two blocks that way. And I was like, sounds great. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I guess it's like. Get me the hand cut. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's used to be a vernacular. It's like the DM keeps throwing these crazy tests at me, and I keep. That's right. <laughs> Matt 20. Matt 20. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, the ground falls underneath you. There's poison darts. I'm like, ace my dexterity save. I make it. <laughs> I'm landing. Awesome. Uh, Josh says, uh, wizards never die. They just change clothes and come back at a plot appropriate time. <laughs> exactly. That's true. Nice. I have done, I have done that, but you know what? We have, a, we do have a, a rule because, uh, here in the Cassidy residence that if one of your guys dies, you have to paint a new guy. So, uh, you can paint that same miniature if you want with the different colors. That's cool. But, uh, uh, I do even minions, even the guys that were were we talk about. Actually, that this also gives you a little bit of investment in in your characters, even though they're non-player characters. Because that if they die, you have to paint a new one. So a little bit of work has to go so, in. So you want to save save minions. your guys, so you get less painting to do. That's right. You want to? That's exactly it. Oh no! I have to paint another barbarian. You have paint a couple extras. Have in reserve. Yeah. That's right. That's, exactly. what, I, that's yeah. what I do. I just go through and paint 30 guys. I do and, that, actually. Yeah, you're, like, you're like, oh, Joe's dead. we got to get Kevin off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely had Bob and Doug, uh, Bob and Doug uh, Conan uh, uh, for my, but my Bob and Doug McKenzie uh, guys. So I, I definitely had to have Bob and Doug uh, Conan. And when Bob Bob died, I had to get a new Conan. And I was like, I had to shop and find the, the other brother Nice. Hey, how's she, how's she going, eh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. Nice uh, in the bottom. Ah, uh, uh, your hoser, you tried to do it. <laughs> my wizard. My wizard, eh? Cool. Uh, okay, I've got three more photos, which I think are um, okay. possibly oh. of um, more recent uh, hobby stuff. But I figure we'll, sure. we'll bang through those, and then we'll jump into the meat and potatoes of tonight's uh, conversation, which is about Geek Nation Tours. Rather, sure. just about terrace's hobby and just about for us grave we'll get into some other stuff as well but uh, uh first one we've got is uh your collection of tiny tiny knights ah yes so um so that there. yeah that's 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 my uh, new old passion so as we talked on crown of command as a matter of fact i was just on with those guys oh cool excellent uh if uh i've always been i think my first my first reason for painting miniatures was Dungeons and Dragons. 
my, and hence the role playing thing. And then my second thing was uh, Epic Space Marine. So uh, when that happened back in the day, that was, I still think that that's GW's best game ever. Uh, I love that game so much. There's a lot of nostalgia there. So now uh, with uh, Le uh, Legion's Imperialis coming out, I'm slowly getting prepared for, for the release of of that and uh so i decided to paint up all the knights that i had uh, all the gray knights or all the knights that were gray are now green yep. so yeah that's that those are my that's that's my current uh painting project i'm a little bit more done than i was after this photo so uh um uh, those guys are almost ready to be on the table what, what i just have to buy a couple of castus and then they'll have a whole household there what, ho what household is that Oh God! I knew you were going to ask me that question. Damn it! Hang uh, on. Oh. <laughs> That's my fault. <laughs> no one's going to beat me to it, probably on the chat. Hang on, let me see. That is Pulse Vironi. All okay. right. Okay. Yep. Vironi. So green and and gold. Um, I think I'm going to paint my because of course in the starter box you get Imperial Guard so I think I'm going to paint them green and gold also. Cool. So tanks, you'll see the tanks that match this. Uh, nice, nice. Awesome. Dude, yeah. Epic, Epic is so good. I can't wait for Imperial yeah. to drop. Like it'll be another yeah. game that I'm like I'm going to build all this stuff and then I'll paint half of it and <laughs> move on to something else. Yeah, and move on to something else. Yeah, see that that's the thing uh, I do kind of commit to a project when i when i go so it's a big commitment and it's a gw commitment so what i haven't been i think like i've been doing on this frost grave kick for about 10 years so i haven't really bought in a gw game and so this will be the first one but it uh apparently they're really trying to uh, uh go back to the old rules the second edition rules yeah. and those are my the rules that i like the best yeah. uh you know epic yeah, that, was the, that was from the space marine box the huge yeah, yep. yeah. Well, back like, in the day, like orcs. I think it came with like orcs and some orcs. Elders. There and yeah, you could play everything. You could play Eldar orcs. I had a, a huge Eldar army, a huge orcs army, and uh, uh, loads of Space Marines. And it's, yeah, it's I one really of the biggest things that I'm out of all the models I've had. It's one of the biggest things that I'm bummed out about. Sometime in like the seven times that I've moved, um, right? My, like myself personally, I lost my. I had a bunch of the metal Phantom Titans. Oh wow! I think I had I think I had three or four metal phantoms, including nice. one of the Eldar, like the the Psy Titan, the Warlock. Like yeah, the, the Warlock. Yeah, yeah, the Warlock. So I had one of those, and then I had nice. two of the old metal armor cast style Warhounds, the ones that look like dogs. Like I had two of those, and right. then I had a whole bunch of the Beetleback Warlords. Like Warlords, every yeah, went, yeah. Every time I went to a trade show, those would be in people's bits boxes, and I'd be like. Okay, legs, body, arms. Legs. Okay, so, oh, <laughs> I can build one more Titan. <laughs> The only stuff I still have is I have a, a little, uh, like, cash box full of all of the Space Marine stands and, like, the right. Land Raiders. And I think I have one metal Warhound, and that's all I have left out of it. But the new – I will say I, I own a bunch of the new Titanica stuff. I love right. the new yeah. scale. I love that they made oh. everything just slightly bigger, like 20% bigger. Even the new the, the new Space Marines look incredible. Like, the detail yeah. on them is awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah, and the war and the Warlord of the Titans, like we actually got into Titanicus at the exact right point. So we started playing Titanicus. We we bought the Warlord and two Reavers, and I bought some knights. And then we we're starting to think, hey, you know what? We should. I wouldn't mind trying to make our own rules about Epic. I don't know if GW will ever do something like that. So let's make our own rules. Two weeks later, I was in in the UK, and they released. Epic at this, and I was like, "Oh my god, we don't have to make our no, new rules now." <laughs> that was really cool. Yes, it was really awesome. You're right. I would like uh, uh, to see the the Titan hit location charts because those were that was one of the fun, most fun part of Epic was like, "Oh no, where does this Titan get hit?" That was that was a, that was a good a good thing from the back. Back in the like day, but I don't I feel think like they're, they're trying anything. to stay away from that because it feels a lot like battle tech if you do that. I think, yeah, I suppose, I think yeah, I think yeah. that's why they're doing it, but that's also maybe, yeah. there's but there's there is another layer layer of it because now there's like the catastrophic damage chart. So, like, depending right. on how much damage you do on a hit, you then roll again on a chart to like be like, right. oh, it's an engine hit, like, so it's kind of there. So, they have that, okay, good, because I don't know anything about their 
Um, cool. The one thing I will tell people is that we had some guys on one of the – I was on uh, – um, we were on What's New with uh, Mike and, and Jeff a couple of, week, a couple of weeks yeah. ago, and somebody brought up the fact that they don't like the way the Titans play in Imperialis, and I was like, that's what Titanicus is for. If you want to just run like yeah. – if you just want to run Titans and Knights, you want to play you want to play that. If you want to yeah. play full scale epic, you want to play Imperialis. Like they are yeah. the big draw is going to be that the Knights just do so much damage and the the Titans do so much damage that they're going to go last and have right. one activation and really mess up a unit. Everything, yeah. This is like, going to be like oh, well, you no. can't win with them because the Space Marines will be like we took the four objectives. And that's like, right. Oh, that's I, all I, that matters. I can't do that. So. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. And Titanic is a good game too. Like, I really enjoyed my time with it, so it was fun for sure. It's, it's one of the strongest rule sets they have out right now. Is the is Titanicus? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it has a lot of fun, a lot of a, a lot of uh, cool and kind of different than regular GW uh, um, uh, stuff. Oh, no, this is my Space Marine. Yep. This is how I uh, my experiment on trying to figure out ultramarine paint for uh, Imperialis. So uh, this is uh, old, old, old Space Marine that I had in my bits box, and I primed them up and and tried to get the paint right. So this is uh, I think what I'm going to do is spray it. What's that? It is, a, cha that? It is a chaplain. It's an yeah. old chaplain, right? Yeah, that old chaplain. Yeah, the isn't it? It's amazing. So good. Like I said, he's probably lead too. So, oh, yeah, he's definitely no doubt. He's no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, it's a rogue trader uh, chaplain. Good, good, good call. So, uh, yeah, so I, I, you know, spray him McCraig blue. Oh, blue, and then wash him with ultramarine blue, but uh, probably a, a thin down ultramarine blue. blue. So, that's my, my, uh, uh, I have to figure out whether I'm going to paint them on the sprue or paint them. Really? Okay, okay, cool. cool. One, one point of contact on and it's at the feet. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, then you, can, then you can do it on the sprue. That'll be great. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Like a spray and then dry brush and then wash and then do all the little details like the gun and the, the bolter and the silver and the, that kind of gold. And that's then you're done. Excellent. As I think a lot of people who haven't gamed at that scale will be like, wow, this is fast. Because it is fast to paint. Like, it's fast to get it all onto the table. Yeah, a buddy um, of ours... Even, buddy of ours even, even got, if you do detail. A buddy of ours got, like, they sent a bunch of sprues out to, like, painters and stuff, and a buddy of ours did everything he sent us. He did it, like, Heresy Death Guard. And nice. they look incredible. And I was talking to him, he was like, yeah, it was super fast. I was like, really? He's yeah. like, yeah, I basically sprayed him. I think he sprayed him Wraithbone. And then he basically painted all the shoulder pads and all the stripes um, a, a green. And then he basically agrash or shaded the entire thing. And they, he was like, that was really he was like, they look they look awesome. Stick like, them on the base. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's what that's is amazing because you can just get them on the table that much faster. So. Excellent. For sure. Okay. And the final uh, photo that we've got is a uh, like a shadow box. Oh think, right. What's going on with this? Yeah, my um, my daughter is uh, is in currently in, in university. Her first year, she had to do some uh, Greek uh, classics courses, but even before that, she was really into the Iliad and uh, the Song of Achilles. So uh, that book, and uh, I I read it. It's awesome. And uh, last year for Adepticon, every Adepticon I have a new uh, custom miniature for the tour. And so I normally it's usually like something to do with with science fiction or you know a wizard or something like that. But I thought I've never done a historical, so I did my uh, did our custom miniature for 2023 Achilles and Patroclus. So this is uh, my my Christmas gift to her. So I I'm going to do a little diorama with the two of them. On the table, they're just on their. You see them on their. They're on their base, very lightly, uh, so I can paint them up. I just finished Patroclus, and uh, I'm working on Achilles right now. Hopefully, hopefully they don't watch the show and see that this is right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I'm sure she will have uh, 
other things to do in university yeah. than watch the channel. Right. Although that it, it is not under the because of course uh, uh, the uh, uh, Taylors were up here and she met them when they came up and they loved each other. They had a good time together. But yeah, this is uh, this is my Christmas present to her. So I have to That's do a little bit. You know what? What's a good source for lighting? Do you guys know? Like, like a little light of the, inside the shadow box. Either for photography. Oh, for the shadow box. Yeah. Yeah. I would just get it. I would just get like something like some LEDs. Right. That way, that way it can be all self-contained, and like you can use a battery and it'll last forever. Like. It, okay. It, cool. That's what I'll do then. I'll look for some LEDs at a I don't know Michaels or something like that. We'll, we'll have yeah. A, yeah. You, you little strip lights. Yeah. 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 I think I'm gonna do that because I think it's a little dark. So and then those there's a glass plate. So oh, it's okay. it's yeah. it, it'll need I think some it'll need some lighting inside possibly, but yeah. Um, so I pulled up the uh, one of the renders of um, Achilles and Patroclus. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put them there. Yeah, it turned out really great. Um, Achilles was. Aw I mean, they both look awesome, but Achilles is the man. Like that's. Yeah, you should see his shield. The shield's all day, all like they. He had a specific shield, and his shield is all got this detail on it. Chad Hover uh, from uh, DMG Miniatures, DMG Miniatures Factory did this for us. He's all he's our our guy when he does all our uh, our, our custom miniatures. But he did it. Yeah, there's the shield. You can see the shield yep. there. Um, he did a hell of a job on this one. It's 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 great. It really is an amazing set. Dave, Dave, we can uh we can go to a Depicon dress like this. I'll be Achilles, and you can. Be <laughs> yeah. Sure. No worries. Sure. <laughs> I'd love to see that. That would be excellent. Yep. It would be actually yeah. quite spectacular. Uh, that cool is, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's, 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 it's awesome. It's good. It isn't it great? Yeah. It, it, has, it has the full. It has the full zodiac. It has all the. Uh, yeah. All the, uh, the signs. Yeah, and uh, you can actually get those at War Games Illustrated now if you'd like to. Uh, all right. Cool. Nice. They are uh, there for that too. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So now I think it's time for us to jump into talking about Geek Nation Tours uh, and what it's all about. Uh, we've been talking about a bunch of other stuff for a little bit. Uh, at the moment, I pulled up a uh, shot from the um, uh, Gettysburg Museum, the, the big diorama. Uh, diorama, yeah, Gettysburg Diorama. So, um, but as we lead into this Gettysburg tour, this Gettysburg tour was uh, 2013, so the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. Absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, let's have it. Have let us know. Tell us a bit more about Geek Nation Tours itself and what yeah. wh what idea sort of brought this to to be into being. Sure. So, uh, the recession of 2009. I had two travel agencies, and uh, uh, it was it was heading into summer when the recession hit. And I asked my staff if they wanted to be, you know, have, have the summer off or to uh, uh, off with okay or to uh, work summer. And to to a man or woman, they said, uh, "Yeah, uh, we want it off." So that meant me. I ha I had been taking off the time that time the summers off at the time, and that means I had to work the summers for the first time in like four years. And in the in a recession and in uh, the summer, it's super dead in a travel agency. So I was like, what am I going to do? This is maddening. So I just decided to buy Donald Featherstone books. And so I was reading everything about I, what I could about his his life and his and his miniature, I mean, his wargaming uh, suggestions and rules. And I can't, one of his books, and I was just ordering random, and he, one of the books was the Battlefield Walker's Handbook, which is a spectacular book about walking battlefields. And so, and of course, the recession, you're always thinking about what you can do differently or different. And I'm like, I could be, I could do battlefield tours. I should do that. And then I was listening to 40K Radio and other podcasts back in the day, and I'm like, oh my God, I could do old geek stuff. And basically, that's how it started. So I just started to uh, find cool and geeky places to go, and uh, Adepticon was one of them, and Gettysburg was another one. So uh, I think actually, that all yeah. was, I was going to say, I think you and I met, met at Adepticon like 2011, yeah. maybe yeah. 2012. Yeah. 
that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Adepticon, I actually just got a booth at Adepticon. And then when I was there, I was like, hey, I talked to the crew. And I'm like, why don't I do a tour to here? And they were like, yeah, that'd be awesome. So we partnered and had a long, that's my longest running tour is Adepticon. Uh, so, uh, but since we're talking about Gettysburg, so Gettysburg, I'm just pricing out the new Gettysburg tour. So we're going to do it again in 2024. And uh, we walk all the battlefields. So like we go to Manassas. So, so we'll get there in the mor- morning. We'll probably have a guide and then we'll walk down the field and then go for lunch and then go back up the field and walk down the other side of the Manassas. So uh, that's the type of thing we do on our battlefield tours. Like we have guides, local guides and, and historians on the, on the battlefield with us and we walk the battlefield. So I want to make sure that uh, like a homage to a Featherstone that we always are on the battlefield, uh, making sure we experience it as best we can and trying to bring back the past, like the vision of what, it was like and, and and that kind of thing. So that's our that's our goal with ours. Yeah. Terrors. Now, do you do you try to do ones that are like I don't want to say I don't want to say more less well known, but like I mean, obviously Gettysburg is a huge battle. Everybody should know what it is. But I mean, do you do anything like in New England? Like you could do you know Concord, you know, first shots of the American Revolution. You could do the USS Constitution, which I can't go on because the 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 below decks it's like for five six. So, oh yeah, that's <laughs> it, it, it's insane. It's still really cool, and the yeah. fact that the USS Constitution is the oldest still floating U.S. naval warship is kind of bonkers. It's cool. Uh, but like you know, there's all that. I, yeah. the only reason I thought about this is because we had some we had some friends up uh, over the weekend, and one of them is like a huge history buff, and he's from right. South. He grew up in like South Carolina, and then he lived in Florida, but he's never been he's never been north of like Maryland. And oh yeah, I was like, if you're a U.S. history buff, like. This is a you gotta be, yeah, yeah, you, you got to go up to the, yeah, yeah for I'm sure. Like, this is where it all happened. He was like, oh, it's really cool. It's like, you should go into Boston and do like the, you know, the independence sort of stuff. But do you do anything like that? Do you do anything like up in my neck of the woods or? Uh, I ha- I have not yet, but I have, that's been on my mind. Uh, the uh, the French Indian Wars have been on my mind. So that whole area has been kind of untapped for me. I did make a stint up there to go to Historicon in that area once before. Uh, and uh, experienced a couple of the battlefield parts for the for the War of Independence, and it is possible for sure. I'm always looking for new tours, and um, I would like to do that. To tell you the truth, that's one been on the kind of the bucket list. Um, I do other ones though. We also is also geographically pretty small. So like right. you can kind of like you could whip it around very, and it's very close to Canada, so it would be like perfect for me. I could just go skip across the border. Yep. So of course I had to go have to go down east first. But yeah, that is it is definitely a, a possibility. I also do like we've done um Waterloo. Uh in April I go back to Japan and we do the Genpei War. So we do uh this whole uh when samurai okay. ethics was just being hang, hang a second, let me find oh. those photos. Let me find those photos. I'm sorry, he's talking about them. <laughs> oh no, we're not. We're talking. I see GW up. Yeah, yeah world. That's one. <laughs> we, can world. Go, we can do that first. No, 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 no. You're talking about Japan. Okay, okay here we go. Okay. <laughs> That's the plastic history from the third edition box, I believe. That's right. Uh, <laughs> they just three of them. Second, yeah, second this edition. is a great photo. Um, yeah. this. On my tours, I always try to get people to dress up. And in this particular, this is the Seki Gahara tour. And uh, there's a festival, a Seki Gahara festival, and we rent armor. So everybody walks down, like they're usually invited onto the parade, and you're fully decked. I mean, they put this armor on you. Uh, you have two people working on you putting this armor, and you have the armor for the day. That and this, oh yeah, this is the whole group of us uh, hanging out in our armor. There's Stephen, uh, Stephen uh, Turnbull from uh, uh, a historian that we have on the tour with us. Again, we have a I usually have a guest uh, tour a guest historian. Next year is Daniele Boelli from History on Fire. If you haven't checked out that podcast, check it out. Uh, so he's coming with us, and yeah, it's an amazing tour of battlefields. Again, we walk the battlefield. We dress up in this festival. Japan festivals are awesome. We go from museum to museum, and we eat spectacular food. 
Paris, so, when's the next time, when's the next time you're doing this one? When's the next time you're doing the one in Japan? Uh, April. I, w- I want to go. I want to do that. Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, I mean, I lived in Japan after university. I, my, my, my degree is East Asian studies with a focus on feudal Japan and, 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 uh, as religion, Japanese religion. And so I, I love uh, going back there. I'm super excited. I haven't been back before the pandemic. This was in 2019. So this is the first time back since the pandemic. And, and I'm super looking forward to it. We go to Onsens. Are you, are, you, are, you still, are you stoked for the Shogun reboot? Oh, yeah, I am, actually. Yeah, let's, see, that <laughs> Shogun, the novel, and then the, then the miniseries, and Wolverine... Frank Miller's Wolverine, Chris Claremont's Wolverine, that got me into Japanese, to samurai ethics. And then from there, I, I studied Japanese, like I read everything I could about Japanese religions, particularly Zen. So uh, that is one of my super passions. So I love going back and there's so much there. Uh, just this depth of culture, but also just this feeling of, of we're all in it together. Yeah, yeah, Japanese have a saying when you when you meet some Yoroshiko and Onigashimas, which means please take care of me. And so basically that's their whole culture, like is taking let's take care of each other culture. And there's lots to learn about that. Lots of cool stuff. One thing though, you know, can you put that other photo back or let me uh put that other one back. If that's possible or else I'll just explain. No, no, it's possible. I just need to uh find it again. Because you're you got me all out of order. Sure, sure. I know, I know. It's like, oh, and we'll back this and this. I, I sent him a message so, this morning and said, Is there I think it's really look? cool, this 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 photo, uh, uh, when it comes up. Uh, she she uh, definitely, definitely wanted to uh, be part of that, uh, you know, festival and everything like that. And then we were taking pictures of after the festival. And if you look really closely on this photo, her sword, the tip of her sword, a dragonfly of... Uh, landed on the tip of her so- sword. Yep. And the serendipity of of dragonflies in Japan is like, wow, that is a Zen photo if there is one. So uh, yeah, that's a really cool photo. I really like that uh, the serendipity awesome. of the dragonfly on her sword. Excellent. So yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So we'll we'll go back to that uh, photo that I had up a little bit earlier. And here you've got a whole bunch of people um, dressed up as nerds. <laughs> out the front of uh <laughs> <Wild> <laughs> the, the, yeah that's that was when we were there last year or this year I'm yeah sure, the I'm sure this was like hey guys make sure you guys dress like nerds yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right you can't, everybody was actually dressed up with the feathers and peacock stuff and everything but then they said okay we're gonna dumb down dumb that down and, and it goes nerds instead so this is this is your um your miniatures in the uk tour yeah so, yeah this is a great this is also I, i'm i guess i'm patting myself on the back a little bit but i don't i don't really uh need to do that but i'm 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 a geek so i love all this stuff right yeah so so we arrive in london and we do some stuff around london which is really cool and then we head up to nottingham and of course we go to gw uh and warhammer world which is a spectacular place if you've ever been there if you've never been there you should really consider it it is mecca for us and uh and I think that the guys at Warlord and Mantic, who we also visit, uh, also said, you know what, we, um, we, what they've created there is an amazing place. Um, and uh, so we visit Warlord and Mantic and a whole bunch of other uh, game stores in, in Nottingham because there's tons to see in Nottingham for a war gamer. And, um, and yeah, we go to the trip to Jerusalem, which is one of the, the most famous and oldest uh, pubs in in, the, in in England, and we invite all the guys that I know from from uh, from around uh, from the past of GW. So those are the Perry twins there, the Jervis that came by. Uh, that's Mr. Robin in the background who has just finished publishing, yeah, World War Games who just finished public publishing uh, uh, talking. Mi- Talking Miniatures, which is an amazing book. You guys should take a look at that if you're yeah. a war gamer. And uh, yeah, so all these guys come by and they just drink with us. Like a couple of years back. Uh, yeah, you're, really, uh, you're really twisting arms to get the GW guys to drink with you. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's right. They love, they love their pints, right? And Dave, Dave and I can talk about the forever. Like, 
One, one of the first times yeah. I ever drank at work was I got promoted at Games Workshop and took over a store. <laughs> and we went down to like a corporate meeting and they took us all out to like a restaurant. So again, I've had other right. corporate jobs. So they're like, right. the waitress comes out and she's like, can I get you guys a drink? And I'm with a bunch of guys and one guy goes, um, can I just get an ice water? And I went, yeah, I'll have a Coke. And then like so-and-so. And then it got to like, I think it was like, I don't know if it was Matthews, but somebody else. Somebody was like, yeah, I'll get a pint. And then like somebody else got a pint. And I was like, I didn't know that was an option. This is an option. This is what happens by the end of the corporate meeting. (laughs) They were like, they're like, yeah, you're supposed to. And then I also, that's also where I learned you never, you never drink more than your boss. That's, that's the trick. That's the, that's the, (laughs) see, yes, that was a good policy. You are never the bad guy. We're like, oh, I can't believe you were so messed up last night. And I'm like, no, 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 it wasn't me. Because I was being careful. You never get drunker than your boss. That's the trick. Oh, see, I always, yeah, I always, absolutely. I always fell on the sword for my boss and got drunker than, than any. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go at the same pace as your boss, though? That's you the. Just, you just can't be more drunk than your boss. Right. <laughs> you can't appear more drunk. We were usually nice. safe. There were usually guys like Ed Spedig you around and stuff. So you were like, <laughs> like, I can drink whatever I want. Things will be fine. Oh, I'm yeah. good. I, I think they have a different culture on drinking there. I think it's it oh, is yeah. kind of like a pop to them in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, I mean, a pop with benefits, maybe. But, <laughs> <Yeah>. but, <laughs> you know. well, so, yeah, for sure. Yep. Uh, Je- Jez says, uh, "British people, we live here. It rains. We drink." Yeah. Oh, can I put a heart on that one? Is there a? I can yep. put a heart. Malev has joined us. Hi, Malev. A uh, bunch of cool people in that photo. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, there are. And, and I see that you got the next photo up. Yep. Uh, one of the other things we do is going to the Bovington Tank Museum, which is a tank museum, basically. You know, any tank that you've ever wanted to see, it's there. And we go on what's called Tank Fest Day. So that's when they bring all the tanks out and they drive them around and and you get to see them and they talk about tanks. There's a commentator that's saying, okay, this tank is from this war and, and you know, it has this loadout or whatever. And you get to, you know, hands on with tanks outside. And, and, and so that was uh, um, another highlight of this particular tour is that we go visit tanks. So, yeah. Fun stuff. Definitely super cool. The, uh, the next one, I've got uh, a couple of photos from uh, Gen Con. I'm guessing this is Gen Con. Okay. Uh, Possibly earlier this year. The, the, yep, uh, also so, this year. So you have to talk about yeah. the game that you were playing at the time. What were we but, playing? Um, so yeah, the first one is uh, is you. When you're... <laughs> That's true, Scott. We do drink a lot here. Yes, oh yeah, so this is uh, Gen Con. This is NSDM. So the uh, National uh, Secure, uh, Secure NS, National Security De- uh, Decision-Making Game. So what happens in this game is that you all get a role to play. It's a LARP, basically, and then you get to, uh, there's a, a catastrophe that happens, and you have to uh, see if you can weather the storm. So I was the chief of naval operations, so they have screens put up, and I can see where all my ships are. So I was moving my ships uh, down through uh, uh, Cuba and... Uh, uh, and yeah, this is Graham McNeil. He was the one. He was our guest on, uh, on the tour, and he ran uh, Call of Cthulhu. But as you can see, he was the president of the United States, uh, uh, Eisenhower at the time. So uh, he and so this all take, took place in, uh, during the Cold War, and so he had, he had the biggest role. He had to juggle all these people. Uh, the Chinese are in a different room, and the Russians are in a different room. And uh, so you have to make all these decisions on the fly. It is a spectacularly fun, fun game. Uh, I assume Graham was drinking scotch. That's usually his drink. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Actually, he's a beer guy. I don't think he drinks really? much uh, hard liquor. But... I, met him at, I met him at Games Day in like 2004, I think, and he was drinking. I think he was, I think he was drinking scotch. Really? Okay, well, I'll have to remind him about that, and uh, we'll take out the scotch. <laughs> he's, he's a great guy. Graham is awesome. Yeah, he's a good. He's also another friend that I've made through this whole craziness that I call Geek Nation tours. So, uh, yeah, the Israelis were there also. So we are, uh, basically the goal was trying to get the Israelis that were in between the Russians, the Chinese, and the Americans, and everybody was trying to uh, 
get them to join their side. So it was really interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, an amazing game. And what I do for Gen Con is a little bit different. I rent a house. Uh, I have a limited amount of people that go on the tour. I think it's 12 rooms or 10 or 12 rooms in the house. And I cook for everybody. Uh, I love to entertain. And uh, uh, I'm a, both an extrovert and an introvert, so I can get energy both ways. But I love to entertain, so I cook for everyone, and we hang out and game at the house, and we jaunt off to, to uh, Gen Con whenever we want, and uh, then we come back, and, and uh, Graham, at this particular point, was uh, giving small sessions of Call of Cthulhu, and uh, so that's kind of a, it's a smaller, uh, tighter uh, group. So uh, the Gen Con tour is a little bit different, uh, but it's also super fun because we really get to know each other and hang out. Is yeah. that Graham dressed up like a uh, bebop? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that was just that was just a uh, uh, random dude that I I found. That's uh, that is actually no, yes, that is Graham McNeil uh, dressed up as bebop. <laughs> as far as everybody knows, that is Graham. Yeah, that's great. excellent. I found that uh, I found that on the uh, Geek Nation tours uh, community. Facebook page. Oh, did you? Yeah. You, yeah. Like that. you surprised me. I didn't. Yeah. I was like, I don't remember sending this one. Yeah. Oh, that's great. This is the one they yeah, used that I, I clipped you out for the thumbnail. Oh, it's just the one they got. Yep. Excellent. Oh, that's great. Oh, Bebop. Poor Bebop is uh, clipped out, but uh, I guess yeah. that's understandable. But it, I, that's why I gave you the, the full full billing here. But uh, that's great. The, the the next photos. Um, oh, just just quickly, uh, Jez said if you've seen the movie um, Fury. That's the um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Brad Pitt. Oh, oh did yeah, they? That's, that's the the tank. tank uh, I mean, it yeah. makes sense. Any any Hollywood movie with that a lot is of interesting. Tank. Yeah, I could see that. I could you could see that because the tanks are are. I mean, they're running in running order. Yeah. So it's spectacular. Je Jez works in the um, in the TV and uh, movie prop and costume industry. So, industry, uh, cool. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. There's a lot that's... Of folks there. Hopefully, hopefully, Jez will help us get our uh, our Achilles and Patroclus uh, cosplays together for Adopting. I'm, I'm That's sure, right. Sure he He'll be able to do the whole thing, yeah, for sure. That's right. Ah, oh, this photo. Yep. So, um, I was going to say, in 2015, uh, right. I was lucky enough, Terrace uh, invited me along as one of the guests for the uh, Waterloo tour. Uh, it was myself and uh, Barry Hilton. So Barry Hilton was our historian uh, who led everybody on the battlefield walking tours. Uh, and I was there to right. teach people how to paint uh, Napoleonic toy soldiers. So, yeah, but uh, that was great. I got, I got to tell you, it was, it was absolutely awesome. But this, this table, um, <laughs> when this initially happened, I was horrified, and then it was like, okay, I'm going to join in. <laughs> but Terrace was like, oh, this this is Napoleon's staff table. This is where he made a lot of decisions about the battles. Let me roll some dice. <laughs> so he whips out some dice. <laughs> it's the actual table, and, and that's the real thing. Like, I think you and I looked at each other and were like, wait, there's no glass. It's, it's okay. It's just plastic dice. It's not like you're rolling, like, metal or stone dice that would damage the table like the plastic yeah. dice are fine you're not going to damage anything but it, it, it was one of those things that was like okay 200 years ago napoleon was sitting at that desk with a map of like northern france southern belgium in front of him well i mean to be fair i assume that napoleon was standing on someone's back so he could look on <laughs> so he could look out on the map. He, I, I know that i know that obviously he was shorter than you but he wasn't super short he was kind of average for, the, average for the age, but it was just the Brit British uh, propaganda that perpetuates this. That's right, that made him short. <laughs> no, but are you guys excited for the new movie? Uh, I actually, yeah, is it out now? Yeah, it is. Or it the is out. upgraded? Is it, movie, out this, right? is, it out, is it out this Friday? No, no, it's out. I went and saw it last week. Yeah, I went and saw it the, last, on the weekend. It's. I think it. Okay. All right. I think it tried to do too much in too short a time. Um, and it's Ridley Scott. I mean, it's Ridley Scott, but he tried but to that, tried to do thirty years or twenty six years in the space of like two hours twenty minutes. So the 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 right. unedited the, so the director's cut is coming out streaming in oh. probably a couple of months, and it's 
four hours. See, that's going to be more interesting. Yeah, but there, it was interesting um, having been to Waterloo and like standing where Wellington was standing in the right. the, um, the thing and seeing the Prussians come on from the other side. Not where they did, actually came on to the battlefield from. It was like, oh, oh yeah. that, <laughs> you're like, wait, why, what? That was unnecessary. Why not <laughs> turn the cameras that way and have them come on from the other side? Um, but uh, they were uh, the costuming was great. The uh, all the the action was great. The um, it did look fantastic. Um, I'm disappointed they didn't have Leipzig, but maybe Leipzig is in the extended version. Because um, I. When they just said uh, when they were in Moscow and the Russians start burning Moscow, and they're like, his and his generals are like, well, we we need to, like, leave Moscow and go back to Poland to like, um, from then it was like a minute of the oh, really? the retreat from Moscow was like a minute, and then <laughs> then it was like twenty seconds of them saying, okay, you're exiled to Elba. And then it, was, then it was like two minutes of him parading up the main street of Elba. It was like, this this Wait. doesn't feel right. There's a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't feel right about this. I bet you that's where gonna, uh, they're going to slam in most of that extra hour and a half. But uh, yeah, I wonder what Hilton, what Hilton thinks. He probably is pulling his hair out. So yeah. Like, no. uh, yeah, that was fun. That was fun rolling the dice. And yes, yes indeed, that is the exact table. But we have um, we've got a couple of photos here from the uh, the reenactment. So this oh, is a, right. the yeah. largest reenactment they've done. They do the reenactments every two or three or four years, something like that. Yeah. But of course, being yeah. the 200th anniversary, it was uh, absolutely super amazing. It, it was spectacular, and you know what? I really got a feel for is the fog of war because how much you know yep. gun smoke. Uh, from cannon and from musket fire was on that field it obscured almost everything uh, yeah. like quickly yeah and i'm like well, that must have been hellish because you wouldn't even know after the first volley like you'd have to just hey where's please part the smoke so i can see where the enemy is so yeah that was a it was a spectacular thing and there was a lot of people on the battlefield yeah it was those guys are beeping. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <It's, laughs> the next yeah. one's uh, one of my favorite uh, favorite shots uh, of the uh, reenactor playing Napoleon. Um, oh yeah, pointing towards that's a good one. But that's uh, a good one. He's yep. I still I, he's pretty much exactly what you thought he was looked like. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's got this chubby little face, and, and yeah. yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, and the horses were amazing and everything. That was a. Um, a really good time, yeah. and and the the uh, we had the view for the uh, no the staging area. We had really good tickets because uh, we went to twice, but uh, we had the VIG t tickets, and so when we arrived, went to the VIG place, and it was there was tons of booze and everything there, and and things to eat, and and uh, I think they didn't think that people were going to drink that much because it was just like, okay, you guys can have whatever you want. And there's these little mugs of Napoleon or Waterloo mugs that are in clay and everything like that. And I'm pretty sure some of those went with some of my clients. And uh, uh, there were the, the helpings the next day on booze was, were much smaller. Right. Uh, the oh, okay. Day. The next night. <laughs> Excellent. You're like, oh, I think we underestimated how much these, uh, how do you say, people will drink. <laughs> the, um, it, was, uh, it was cool, and yes, we did drink quite a bit. But uh, one of the things that I, I loved about it, um, that tour, is that we also got to go to the Waterloo Museum, uh, which was a brand new museum that the, um, apparently the, the Belgian government had decided about, about three months before the... Um, anniversary they were like oh i think maybe a lot of people are going to come maybe we should yeah. do something so they built this museum in three months but they didn't just like build a museum up above ground because they didn't right. want to sort of mar the surface of the uh, mar the, the okay. sight lines so they right. dug down into the ridge and built the museum underground and uh then sort of covered it over so you could 
come to the sort of walk over the top of it and not realize that it was kind of realized that yeah, it was there. Something. But um, inside that, they had uh, so many um, uh, replica uniforms for an incredible amount of replica uniforms for the all the um, troops that were there at Waterloo, and. Yeah. It was it's funny because on the on the Monday I'd done the painting lesson and then on the Wednesday I think we were at the <laughs> museum and doing the painting lesson I was like oh I can't remember exactly what the trim of this French backpack is right right and then we went into the museum and I was able to stand there and go yep got it right oh, or oops, got it right. oops I made a mistake yeah we need to change that <laughs> change the but that's it was, awesome it was awesome and it was also... a, it was actually one of my most hellish uh, tours to, to, to go through yeah. Uh, because, because I did, did not, not know about almost everything yep. prior to arriving at that place. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So, yep. Yeah. So that so that museum was literally open five five days before we got to it. The other museum that we went to, oh, the one with the table there. Yep. It got it was it's an it's a fairly old museum, but it got totally revamped, and it was open the day before. Right. So there was. So a, it was. Maybe, maybe that's why there was no plastic around the or, or glass around the table because they didn't have a ship yet. They were like, was no, like, like, nobody's, like, nobody's gonna touch this. They're like, nobody's yeah. gonna touch this. <laughs> Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the Canadian. Let's roll dice. <laughs> Excellent. But uh, yeah. no, that was a. It was a definitely an, an awesome uh, trip. I really appreciate uh, appreciate. Oh, that. it was great to have you. It was great to have you. Um, sure. let's, uh, let's quickly run through some others. Um, sure. definitely super cool. I would 100% go back on that. Uh, next up we've got, uh, so this is from, uh, Talon, I think. Oh, okay. yep. yep. So, uh, that'd be coming up in a second, but this was the, uh, Frostgrave tour, right? Frostgrave. This tour, uh, again, a, a small group, I think. I forget what I think we had 12 or something like that. And uh, we went to Estonia because Frostgrave, uh, Joe had all the rules done and uh, didn't really have any background to the rules, didn't have any fluff. And he went on a tour, uh, a holiday with his wife, just a kind of quick getaway. And little did he know that when you go from Britain to uh, Estonia in winter, there is a little bit of a difference between each one's weather and so he arrived in this cool medieval town which is an amazing place in the center of Tallinn and uh, it was snowy and bleak and he's like okay I've got my uh, I believe this is the story anyway I've got my setting so in this tour we uh, discovered the medieval town this is but everybody that was with us uh, I mean our guides the local guides were um, uh, living history guys so they they dressed up all the way through and so we had every day we had a living history guide with us uh regaling us on on uh talent's history and uh things to do and then every day we played frost cream i'm pretty sure it was every day so yeah there's, there's me in the hat so uh, they had us walking down as the street yelling at one point and uh, dressed up as uh estonian uh uh, royalty. Uh, it was quite fun, and a lot of people were looking at us and pointing, and, or rather, looking at me and pointing because I had the hat on. That's so, nice. <laughs> so that was that was a, that was a lot of fun, and yeah, and it was you know it was amazing about of history there, and just a different vibe. Uh, this is where the Silk Road kind of uh, intersected with Europe, and so just the a cool amount of different uh, foods and uh, kind of mixed with European foods. And uh, I, I, for the first time in a long time, I was like, wow, I'm in really somewhere like I've never been before. So that's, uh, so uh, Talon was, I would go back in a second. To that, is a, that is a gorgeous shot too. Like looking out yep. over the Harbor and like, it's a spectacular, it's a spectacular place. And I would, I, I mean, I would love if you came with me, of course, but, this tour, uh, if you ever, if anyone, and if you're in Britain or wherever you are, have a chance to go to Estonia, you should take it. It's a spectacular place. Yeah. 
Definitely super cool. So the and of course Joel was with us on this tour. So. Right, yeah, Joe was the the guest. Uh, yeah, running the games, yeah. but no, definitely um, super cool. I think um, one of the uh, I think the last photos that I've got are for Adepticon. Um, cool. But um, just quickly, I will say, yeah, the last photos got for Adepticon. Um, <laughs> the uh, yeah, one, one of the um, tours you didn't put in here was the uh, Star Trek oh. tour. Yeah, yeah so we, just, we, we do a Star two Trek minute, tour. Two in... minutes on the Star Trek tour. Two minutes as well. Okay, yeah. we do a Star Trek tour in Vegas. I mean, in, in LA. It's already screwed up my timing. <laughs> uh, and we go to Star Trek filming sites. And so we'll go to Ropente and and uh, cool places that are... are and we, I have a local guide, Larry Nemechek, that brings us to those places and says, stand here, this is the set from this season or this episode of all the all the different uh, shows all the way through Star Trek's history. So uh, we go from place to place to place. And uh, uh, in the past, we've ended up, after that, we, we took a coach to the Las Vegas uh, Star Trek convention. So... Um, yeah, uh, it's an ama- also an amazing uh, tour, and now we're getting it together that we'll have a guest uh, Star Trek uh, uh, actor or uh, or uh, director come with us each day to wherever we're at. Like uh, we'll go up to uh, we have go up to uh, the uh, Griffiths Observatory, and Kim Russ uh, that played uh, Tuvok on Voyager comes up there, and he's a big. Uh, amateur astronomer so he'll bring his telescope and we look at the stars with him so that kind of thing yeah that's awesome Awesome. it's one of the things that i do love about um what you do is anybody can go to those places right you can you can walk around and go okay here's you read a book about what happened in each of those places but but you're specifically going and sourcing (laughs) sourcing these people um right like tuvok who and who has a passion for for something where you, you can everybody who's there can interact with him as um the the actor rather than the character right yeah um, yeah we yeah we do, yeah. We, do we do we make sure that that everybody gets a voice you know what i mean like it's it's easy to just think that that person is the character and he is yeah. i mean i i read i am spock it's a great book but uh they are those people, but they're also themselves too. So I think that that's a really important thing to make sure that people don't uh, don't go full out Star Trek on them, and and they can ask Star Trek questions, of course. But it's important to, to humanize people too. Yeah, I feel like I feel like now it's it's so much easier to see that. Like I like I, I don't know, I don't know if you guys have watched like Picard or if you like lower lower decks is like I didn't think I was gonna like it, and I love it. Tony, oh yeah, Tony Newsom. Beckett Mariner is my spirit animal. She is my, <laughs> my favorite character in the Star Trek universe. She's incredible. Um, right. But like one of the cool things about that show now, and some people don't want to like, like you were talking about, some people don't want to see behind the curtain. They don't want to like, you know, break right, that right. facade or whatever. But I think one of the coolest things they do is Will Wheaton is a show called um, Ready Room, where he right. has people on who are, you know, like, uh, Will Frakes has been on a bunch of times, and everybody knows him as Riker, but he directed a ton of them. So he's been on talking about like directing, and it's really neat because you get to see like them as people and like what they're into and like what kind of makes them tick and why they did this. So I, like I always appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, like I think it'd be really cool to to hang out with somebody like Tim Russ and be like, oh, like he's really into astronomy and like that's pretty rad. And like you know, what are you up to? And like, is that why? Like, were you excited to be on Star Trek because you were in a, you were into like the idea of astronomy as, as a kid and you were like, this is kind of neat. You know what I mean? Like that'd be kind of a right. cool thing. that would be cooler for me to hear than him yeah. being like, like hey, can I just talk to you for five minutes about this episode you were in ten years? That's ago? right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely. So, uh, next up then, we'll jump into Adepticon. We have a couple of photos from Adepticon. Uh, first one is uh, a particularly excited attendee going through swag. Um, so. Yeah. Oh, really? Is that what yeah. yep. That's awesome. Oh, let me see. Oh, we, yes. Hang on a second. Uh, Scott, uh, I Am Spock was a sequel to I Am Not Spock. And they're both really great books. You should take a look at it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, this is what a... Uh, a 
a family. Um, this is Jose sitting down, and he's uh, the the uncle of two uh, uh, young gentlemen that he brings with him every year. It's always great to see him. And yes, the amount of swag and stuff you get at Adepticon is crazy. Uh, this is our first night, our welcome dinner, and what we do is we organize everybody's swag so you don't have to go in a line or anything like that. We pick up all your passes and everything like that, and then we have this big celebration, welcome dinner, uh, where I give you all this Christmas stuff uh, and take uh, credit for uh, what Adepticon actually does. And, uh, and, uh, and we hang out for the night uh, at this particular time. It's, and... Uh, uh, that's one of the great things about uh, this tour is that uh, all that's all taken care of. You don't have to worry about it. And it is a mad amount of stuff. Yes, yes. Yep. It's, it's crazy. I actually literally tell people, you need to bring a second suitcase. And and when you come, put a suitcase within a suitcase because you're going to leave with a whole bunch of stuff. Even if you give half of it away, you're still going to need a second suitcase. It's yep. crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, Scott, Scott yeah. Hit, hit me up with your, with your questions. I've learned my lesson. At, at any any shows where I know I'm going to buy stuff, I pack pretty light. So I bring my big bag from um, my big bag from the guys at uh, Equilibrium. Nice, nice. Great. It's, it has like a military harness and everything. So I bring nice. That, and I bring a rolling suitcase that's less less than half full. And right. then at, at the end of the show, I pack as much stuff in my backpack as I can. And right. I have almost the entire suitcase empty, and then I basically fill it up with all my stuff, and then I it, it, oh. takes, it expands, and then I. Uh, okay. Yeah. You have to, yeah you absolutely have to because no matter what show you're gonna come you're gonna come back with stuff. Now when you now that I have a corporate account because we have our own store, oh, no. what I do now is I usually like at the end of the show I'll ask one of the vendors, hey, do you have a spare box? And then I'll oh, right. just, I go to the hotel and I UPS at home like that's UPS. <laughs> that's always nice too. Uh, Scott, yeah, we do have uh, places uh, left for 2024. Uh, though, uh, you'll have to act on it soon because I will close the tour for uh, booking at the end of December because uh, Adepticon just released that they will be releasing their cart on the 7th of January. January and that means that we have, a, we have pre-public access to the cart. So, so we'll, we'll actually get, get into the cart on the 30th of December. And so, so I'll close the tour for booking on the 30th of December. So if you want a spot, get it soon. Uh, I think I only have a few single occupancy rooms left. Uh, I might be able to fit you in with a double occupancy, but it, that's all almost all gone. Um, yeah, so that's one of the things we do is the pre-public uh, registration. So if you're coming from wherever, like if you're coming from Japan, then you just go uh, you get into whatever you want, basically. I've never had anybody say I missed that. Scott, what's the secret Canadian code? Scott, it's, it's how she go in A, all one word. <laughs> she go, oh, she go in A, how she go in A. Excellent. Sorry, how she go in A. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, how she go in A. The link is in the... Your, your A was really good. That's a hard one to pull uh, off. The... The link is in the uh, notes below, so I definitely right. um, can check it out. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely cool. Yeah, so, um, so that, and then we also have an industry leader site. Oh, hey, I shouldn't. Uh... Oh, this is our Frostgrave night, so now our Osprey night, actually. So every Thursday, we uh, get Brent Sinclair that is in charge of Osprey Games, uh, Frostgrave uh, stuff, and he runs us. Uh, uh, a specific scenario. So this year we're doing Stargrave. So last year was Frostgrave. This year Stargrave. Maybe next year might be, I don't know, uh, Silver Baronet or something. But we always do a new one. So we and it's usually a small uh, uh, band. So it's half the band that you need. So instead of ten miniatures, you have five miniatures. And so we play a Frostgrave that night too. Yep. So that's one of the things. Too. And then we also have an industry leaders night where all the a whole bunch of people from various different companies come. I have a big announcement on that, but I can't quite say uh, who's coming. But I do have a cool one. Uh, oh, they're all cool, but I have an extra extra one that's coming this year, possibly. And and we have uh, maybe Dave Taylor might show up at that particular. See, I, I was wondering if he was going to make it that I was the cool announcement. But no, I'm not the cool announcement. <laughs> 
He's Xander also cool. <laughs> I'm I'm a cool announcement. I'm not the coolest announcement. Obviously, I'm the announcement <laughs> that can be made right now. I'm not the announcement not that can be made that. in like a week or so. And that's not fair to all the other guys that come. I'm sorry about that, guys. You, you, you're right. They are. They are. They are, they are all much cooler. They're all, all going to say, <laughs> say, "Screw you, terrorists. We're not going to. We're not going to come. We're not as important. Uh, it's not that. It's just somebody. It's just somebody new that that, that I'm excited about. Oh, cool. I'm, it's, it's a I'm new, excited to discover who. It's a new game. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's cool. cool. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So that's what we do at Adepticon. So every night we do something. And you're free to geek out whatever we want. So if you can't show up at night, then we'll, we'll, we'll definitely have to hang out. Or... We'll definitely have to hang out when we're there. Like, I, yeah, for I, sure. We have so many. We have so many uh, like hats in the air this year. So we're doing stuff for. For Adepticon, obviously, and then Dave usually runs the paint and take area. Well, I don't, then, I don't run it. I hang out there. Well, like, he helps out. <laughs> uh, and then we've, I've also got stuff going on with the guys who do Warzone. Oh, nice. And then there's, uh, we get something else going on too. I, I think Dave and I are going to try to do a live event while we're at Adepticon this year. Oh, that's cool. Let me know. I'll come by and say hello. Hell yeah. Yep. And then, but then you obviously, like, we talked about this before, like at Devil Guns here with Chill, because we just get to hang out with so many people that we know. It's like yeah. it is sort of the, the it is the gathering of all the nerds. Like so yep. we all get to like hang out. It is. And it's it's I mean, we see we see people at every show we go to, but I, I see the most of my of my like industry friends at Adapticon, like more than any any other show. See, I was gonna say think... nerd clan, but sure, industry yeah, friends. Yeah, it's the nerd clan. Yeah, I, th I think that it's my favorite convention. Like, I'll yeah. say that outright. Absolutely. Um, it's so personable. After everything happens at night, everybody just hangs out in the lobby and has a drink or and visits. And and it's really like kind of coming home to me. Yeah. Like, when I come home, that, that hotel has a certain Marriott smell. You come in and it smells like, wow, I'm home again. And then you see people that you haven't seen for a year. And... Uh, and yes, yes with them, them and meet new friends, friends and, and and it really has a a, a home feel for yeah. sure yeah. and you see and it's definitely the best uh, uh convention that i've been to uh that has for miniature wargaming it's spectacular definitely cool so um everybody if you want to check out uh geeknationtours.com uh, as i said the links are in the notes but notes below um, you can find out about all the tours that uh, Terrace is planning uh, that he's got coming up. You've seen some photos from the past. Uh, there's a lot of uh, cool sort of info. You'll have a bit more of an idea now having watched, uh, listened to Terrace talk about the different aspects um, of how everything sort of rolls in. But there's all sorts of cool stuff. I know um, my favorite brewery tour that I've ever done was on the Waterloo Battlefield oh. tour. Um <laughs> Because the uh, oh my goodness, what yeah, you, sorry about that. Did you just like detonate your computer there? No, I, anyway. I hit. I opened another. I opened another window and it went to the all white Google screen and I was like, oh, <laughs> I did not need that. You need to set that up for nighttime. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, there was that was fantastic. Mainly because the and nothing really to do with terrorists, but the the tour guide on that particular brewery tour was just like. He he didn't uh, sugarcoat anything. Everything was no. much his, his <laughs> flat out opinion on all sorts of stuff, and it was fantastic. Uh, but it was anyway. So Terrace, one of the other he things was we do like on the show. Grumpy old man. He was. He was great. He was a grumpy old man. It was great. Um, but uh, one of the other things we do on the show, Terrace, is we uh, take a look at miniatures from the uh, Bill Paint Play Community um, Facebook page. Oh, cool. So uh, cool, 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 cool. if you would. Uh, be cool sure. sticking with us so we can have a yeah, yeah absolutely i'd love to see him um doesn't, doesn't like miniature but also scott says i'm not a loser i can bring a friend i'm super super charismatic <laughs> this is true i am looking forward well if you if, if that's true you'll also leave a little whole bunch of friends i i am looking forward to meeting scott in person um it should be great i'm not, I'm not a loser but that'd be a good t-shirt <laughs> red bubble probably has that t-shirt by the way if you want to go pick one. they probably do they probably do <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh yes so jumping straight into that first up we have uh some shatterpoint uh star wars shatterpoint models from chris gorka Ooh. so we have uh mace windu and uh general kenobi uh, I'm assuming he's a general Ooh, at this point. Very nice. 
Yeah. Every yeah. time, every time I see Kenobi, all I can think of is uh, is uh, the Big Lebowski. I just want to be like, the dude abides. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he is wearing that uh, that robe. Uh, those miniatures are spectacular. They yeah, they're really, really very really have the. Uh, and the paint's amazing too. They really have that Star Wars vibe, that animated Star Wars vibe. I, I think yep. it's spectacular. They do. They look great. Yeah, all the, the Shatterpoint minis are so nice. Like they're they're so much fun to paint. They're they're thirty six mil, I think. So they're they're a little bit bigger than than like yeah. Legion stuff because it is a slightly different scale. But they're they're awesome. Yeah. This is really well done. It's hard to do white. I find anyway. It's spectacular. Yeah. Chris does uh, does beautiful um, clean work, and as um, yeah, Jez said, there a lush matte finish. So very cool. And great. the and the grays building up to white that's spectacular. I love it a lot. Yeah. That guy on the left, um, the Trump Trooper to the left is what is that? It's left leg uh, in shadow. That's awesome. Wow, it's spectacular. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely cool. Excellent, great work there, Chris. Thanks for sharing. Uh, yep, love it. Next up, we've got uh, Cliff Edda's, uh Demi Squad of Infernus Marines. Uh, this is after he's finished off the um, the transfers on the shoulder pads, and oh, bases, huh? he finished off the bases. Oh, Dave! Yeah. Dave will sleep, sleep well tonight. tonight. Yep. He, pin- he, pin- <laughs> he posted this picture and said, "I don't know what Dave will say about him." A photo with finished bases. <laughs> Uh, I love it. What's, what's the, the secret, secret to the, the, the ultra paint? paint that I want to hear your secret too. Uh, uh, they look great. And it's, it's funny, funny that you said transfers because oh. in Canada, there's a, we say decals, decals, not yeah. decals. decals. We've, we, we had that comment a couple weeks ago. And I was like, that's like, I don't even understand like how you get that word. Like it's such a weird uh, yep. Canadianism because it's only in Canada. apparently. No, so. no, yeah. No, decal. It was it decal else decal it's a it's a UK thing. It's a British thing. So oh, is it? It's, okay. it's, it'd be a com- well, it'd be a Commonwealth well. thing. Yeah, in Australia, they're okay. they're probably decals. Decals also. Or transfers. I've only, I've only ever heard them called transfers. They're ones <laughs> I've ever heard them called decals. transfers, like, not decals at all. No. Ah. We, even even working for GW, even before that, when I was a, when I when I was collecting stuff, they were always just water slide transfers. Because at first. I mean, I was I was probably like 12 when I got my first box of Rogue Trader Space Marines, and I was like, oh, these are stickers. And somebody went, no, they're like, they're not, you can't like peel them off, they're not stickers. And I was like, I don't understand. And then they're like, oh, they're water slide transfers. And I was like, got it. So I never even called them decals because they're not decals, they're water slide transfers. Like, uh, Scott, is that, is, Scott says, yes, so we, you, <laughs> we had this debate. So do you think that there's, oh, this is a new debate. This is an old debate. That Deckles, Deckles for life. <laughs> Deckles, for, Deckles for life. <laughs> yep. Uh, so did, is our, our, in your mind, are transfers different, different than Deckles? Yeah, so so a decal a decal would be something that like you can either peel off and, and put on. Oh, it's a, like a sticker. Yeah, it, it, and I've worked with, um, I forget who makes it. There was a, I think it's like a Ravel kit. I had a Ravel kit from like years and years and years ago. And it was a, it was like a, a Mitchell B-25, like medium bomber from World War II. And it had a sheet of, you know, you know, the American star with the badge for like the wings. And it had like unit markings and all that kind of stuff. And they were, they were listed as decals because you had to basically use a specific paint to get them to stick. Like, like, you could peel, peel them off, you use a pair of tweezers, and you peel them off the backing, and then you put them where you wanted it, and then you were supposed to use this, like, I guess it was almost like... Um, the varnish. Yeah, but, like, you, you painted it on, once you stuck it where you wanted it, you painted it on, like, the, the one layer. It'd be like, yeah. my, it'd be like instead of Microsol, it was just Microset. Okay. So you just painted it on, oh, yeah. and then okay. it, it stuck there. And, and those are and those were listed as decals, and I was like, okay, got it. They are decal transfers, but <laughs> decal transfers. So it has got to be qualified. Okay, that's enough. We're, we're moving on. We're moving on. <laughs> moving on. The decal thing, I don't. Care. Moving on. <laughs> Dave Hummel uh, has in his lunch hours has been working on some uh, Heresy Marines. Uh, I like it. Uh, He's so. working on a Dr Pepper <laughs> and a Dr Pepper and as well. No, no blood on the Exacto knife, so that's nice to see. Yep. He's uh, very skilled at building Marines, for sure. He's, uh, he's our friend Dave. Uh, 
<laughs> Pardon me. Uh, next it's up, the uh, old GW case, the gray one. Yep. <laughs> so next up, this is from uh, Josh Potter. Uh, Josh has been working nice. on a, a Mark One uh, tank from World War One. Is it Mark One or is this Mark Four? I can't remember. Which one? But uh, Josh is definitely chat. He'll let us know. Uh, <laughs> Dave, that is great. Dave Humble said uh, that's your US government dollars at work <laughs> <laughs> fantastic uh, and awesome. I love that yeah but it's well, really, that's great very cool type I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a type I think that's a type I think that's a type 4 Mark, um, a Mark 4 um, I think Mark 4 I have female. no idea I've seen it at the Bovington Tank Museum though. yeah <laughs> excellent but Josh will uh, let us know there but yeah great work there Josh Looks awesome. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Uh, Kelly, uh, Kelly Rowe finished off his uh, villains from the Earth's Mightiest Heroes box set for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Ooh. So we have all those together. So Doc Ock, Red Skull, Ultron, Ultron's bots, uh, Baron, somebody. Zemo. Zemo, thank you. And uh, Crossbones? Yep. yep. Yeah, uh, look at me. I'm learning. Look at <laughs> that Doc Ock miniature is great, too. And the colors, the green, well played. Yeah, he's he Kelly posted this the other day, and I, and I, I was kidding around with him, and I wrote, the reason why Doc Ock's overweight is because he's never walking anywhere. His stupid robot arms are carrying him all the time. Yeah, it's not getting the steps in. <laughs> he's not burning enough calories. Yep. Well, I mean, the only alternative is that the arms get fat. Sure. Yep. <laughs> I do love that. I do love that they gave Ultron a cape. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen Ultron with a cape, even in the movies or the comics. Like he's just a robot. But I loved it in the set. They're like, let's give him a cape, and I was like, all right, okay. Go back. Ooh, look at these. Sorry, I, uh, I I I skipped ahead too quickly. Now I've skipped back, so I probably shouldn't have done that. What? But, we, but we've gone back to look at the cape. Oh, okay. It's a, little, it's a little delayed on mine. It's okay. Now it's switched. Now it's gonna switch. <laughs> Sorry. I like it. I do like the fact that the cosmic cube case is under his foot to the red skulls. Yeah, the shield case. That's pretty slick. Yeah. That was a good decision. Those models are really nice. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So uh, great work there, Kelly. Thanks very much. Uh, next up is Christian Simonson. Uh, he's been painting some more of his uh, Skaven. Let me let me guess, Skaven. Yep, you are absolutely correct. Oh. How did you guess that? It's That's amazing. It's, it's almost as if I've seen, seen this picture before. before. It's a little bit of deja vu. We like to uh, provide a little bit of deja vu for everybody. <laughs> I like them. They're great. I love the old school. That's so awesome. Yeah, bases are awesome. Real well done too. Yeah, I think uh, I like the, uh, Reese's, Reese's peanut, peanut butter cup by the uh, rats, like back legs. All right, <laughs> is that what that? Is? I don't <laughs> think that that. I think that's a Venus flytrap esque thing, but it could be a Reese's peanut butter. Cup. It looks like a Reese's from this angle. It's got the little rid, little ridges. Now I'm hungry. Yep. But uh, Chris is like uh, working on like some scave and getting ready for uh, Warhammer of the Old World. Oh wow. I yeah, the rope is really well, well done too. The, the, the leather on the rope is. Yeah. Well. I mean, sorry, whip. Is what I yeah. Meant to say. yeah. Yeah, that's great. And rust on the blade. Always good to have rust on the blade with Skaven. Yeah, definitely cool. Uh, next up, so thank you, Christian. Uh, next up is uh, from Scott. Uh, Scott has painted up uh, a Bayou Gremlin from uh, Malifaux. Oh wow! He's done a beautiful job on this one. That green skin is amazing. Yep. Wow. Definitely super cool. But he said he saw um, somebody else had done a uh, base like this. Uh, so we wanted to give it a go. That old sort of rotting jetty kind of kind of feel. But, I'm by the bayou. Yep. It definitely looks so. Uh, I love, this, I love the size of the hook on that thing. It's like... What, what is he going to get that has a mouth big enough to get that hook? Whatever it is, it's going to pull him off the dock. Yeah, it's going to be That's correct. Good. Yep. It's it like, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Should be that should be the name of that. He's going to do a little hillby, hillbilly uh, water skiing. Like, uh, right. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. And the fact that his feet are, are at cross, just trying his best to get it out there. 
Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Scott said it's for sale. Five hundred bucks US off the adapter <laughs> contract. Yeah, it's yours. And it's yours. <laughs> Message for no yeah. in particular. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic i love it fantastic yeah uh, uh, you know where to get me awesome great great work there scott it looks yeah, yeah i like it and of course always adding the the flowers of the reeds and all that other stuff is always spectacular it adds so much to the life of the miniature for yeah, definitely good yeah, i always mean, I feel like you can have you can have an okay miniature and as long as you base it well it immediately looks better and if you have a really great miniature and you don't base it well it never looks right it's always like yeah oh, did he finish absolutely this? Yeah, you put a whole bunch of life into it. You got to give the base of life some life too. And uh, amusingly Ooh. enough, uh, Tabletop Super Show, who's uh, Stephen, has just arrived. Uh, just as we've put his uh, his mini up there, it's a terrain piece, a wonderful sacrificial altar that he's been uh, painting up. Oh, I, I said something about life before and death uh, always always follows so close good. behind. <laughs> yep, <laughs> always a good thing to do to add <laughs> to your miniatures. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I think in the uh, post, uh, Stephen said that the um, so the the blood that's in the little uh, that's pooling in the little sort of uh, font in front of the the stone there is, uh, okay. and the drips are done from uh, hot glue. So oh, wow. um, once you built and painted everything else, put the hot glue in, and then uh, covered that with um, not blood for the blood god, but the uh, two thin coats. Um, equivalent. Yeah, yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it's. I think it's bloody blood or wet blood or something. Maybe bloody something blood. like that. <laughs> bloody blood. Bloody blood sounds like a uh, Vallejo game color. <laughs> so what? So what do you think? Does he take the glue gun up from the from from the, from the, from the pile or down from the? Pile? Right. Well, Stephen, which which way do you do it? Do you start at the top and drip down? Start at the bottom. Pull it up. Let us know. Pull it up, yeah. Uh, See, I, would, I, would think, I would think down. I think you want gravity to kind of do the work for you so it looks natural. Right. Possibly. I don't know. It's always fun working with hot glue, though. Definitely good. Great, because you never know what it's going to do. It could be all over your fingers or zombie yeah. burning you. And... Oh, oh wow. Zombie Look at this scar. First. But yeah. New. <laughs> But uh, yeah, as Stephen said, it's also it's a Christmas gift that he's working oh, on. Bottom for up, else. okay. From the oh, bottom nice. up. There you go. Are correct. I, like, I like that. <laughs> Scott says, obviously, it's a Christmas gift. Nothing about it doesn't scream Christmas. Can't wait to see anniversary gifts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, there we go. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for that, Stephen. Um, absolutely awesome. Love thanks, for everybody, for uh, posting the photos in the group. Uh, again, links for that are down below. You can check it out uh, on Facebook. Uh, there are more photos, more bits and pieces, and a lot more information uh, when everybody posts those. Uh, <laughs> Trust says <laughs> it's the centerpiece for Christmas Village. It's, it's definitely, perfect. Definitely for a, a Josh Santa style Claus. Christmas village. You just need a, a miniature with Santa and his two guns hanging out there. And... Yeah. Nice. Yep. Definitely the bad Santa yeah. all the way. But that's uh, great. no, super cool. Um, that's great. Thanks everybody for uh, sharing those uh, models with us. Um, oh, Josh says uh, thanks for the show today, guys. Really enjoyed the chat today. I uh, hope to go on one of the GNT tours in Japan one year. They look really fun. Yeah, seriously, like I, I, we might have to talk to Aaron. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I, I would love to be able to go there for April. Yep. Oh, that's spectacular too. Like rad. <laughs> my, my wife, my wife's been a couple times for work, and and I've I've always wanted to go to Japan, and it's it's just like something's always happened or timing's wrong. I'm like, oh man. Again, the 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 country is just a spectacular place to visit. It really is. Like yep. no matter who you go with, or you go on your own, or you go with me, whatever. But it's it's. it's uh, an amazing, amazing experience, experience because it's so it's so, so different but also you can feel just this i don't know lawfulness about it or something i don't know it's it's a, it's it's awesome yeah thank you and sorry for rambling on about no, no, we're excited we're excited about it we, we can talk more we can talk more once once we're once we wrap up the show because i have a couple of questions but yeah. okay, hmm. two hours so awesome nice
So yeah, we'll uh, we will wrap up the show now. Uh, we are, have just got past the uh, two hour mark. Um, but uh, first, I want to say uh, thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to uh, like, uh, subscribe. We're uh, on our way towards uh, 500 for the end of the year. That's our aim. Um, I'll be talking with... Uh, so this weekend, as I said, I'm going to be at uh, PAX Unplugged. So I'm going to have a quick chat with uh, Kit and see if we can't uh, pick up a thing or two for a giveaway, um, a subscription boosting giveaway. Um, <laughs> we'll talk with, uh, with Adam from Army Painter and might be able to chip something in as well. Uh, but next week uh, we'll be talking about basically doing a PAX Unplugged um, recap because uh, I'll be there for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so it should be pretty cool. And I would have been, but I'm moving my store. <laughs> I know, I know. It's it's probably a slightly more important thing for you to be doing, but... Uh, I'm, so, I'm so mad. Good. Like, as if I wasn't mad enough at my landlord. I'm like, now you screwed up my PAX Unplugged? Like, oh, it's so stupid. <laughs> Sean is going to be at PAX. Humanity! Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Sean is going to be at PAX, uh, which will be cool. So definitely swing by and say hi. Make sure you take some minis along, Sean, for the uh, painting competition. I don't know who runs that or how it's being run or anything like that, but I know that they are most likely going to have one. Um, friend of the show, Rick Hankney, will be there as well. Yeah, friend of the show, Rick, will be there, definitely. Uh, it would be super cool. He's running three painting lessons, three painting classes, I think. Uh, one on the Saturday, two on the Sunday. Uh, but it should be um, pretty awesome. Scott says, tell us the landlord story again, Jake. Uh, do not. Do I saw not, that. I didn't do want not. to. Do not. Do not. back. Scroll back through. I don't even want to talk about it. Just so, just so you can get all the details. Uh, go back and have a look at it. Now. But um, absolutely awesome. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Terrace. It's been great. Uh, oh, my pleasure. Yeah, that's fun. To have you. Um, Lots of memories there. <laughs> very cool. Uh, and uh, say hi to the family for us. I will um, say hello to yours too. Yep, we'll do. I'd love to have them back up. You have to come back up one of these days. Yeah, I, I visited Terrace in 2018, uh, summer of 2018. Uh, it was great. We right. spent uh, three nights at your place, I think. I think so, yeah. Uh, was it only three? It seemed like more. Um, I, I, oh, I, 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 I didn't mean it that way. I have that effect on people. <laughs> I really didn't mean it that way. He's been here forever. <laughs> it was my like, half. Oh, never leave. It was fun. I, I honestly thought it was more though. But did, did we? We had a forest fire or something. We like did. That. We had a forest fire. I didn't show that photo. We were sort of skipping through, but uh, yeah, it was basically when when we were trying to leave. Hinden, it was essentially was like you need to pack. Yeah, it was like uh, we can't go east because there's an uh, east or south because there's an enormous <laughs> fire. We can't go west because there was a tanker fire on the road. Uh, <laughs> our, our next option was to go north to Alaska, That's um, right. <laughs> but uh, we decided to yeah, wait was... out the tanker fire. We went back to Terrace and right. we went and got Tim, Tim Hortons, I think. Um, yes, we that's something, right. We did yes. something typically Canadian, but. It was, it was uh, but I did definitely, it was, it was bad enough for me saying, you guys need to have your shit packed. Yeah, it was. That, that, that's, that's not a good time when that's. <laughs> no. He, knew, he wanted to get rid of us, so he said, forest. No, that's right. <laughs> Terrible. Anyway, anyway, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and anyway. thanks again to our uh, sponsor, The Army Painter. Um, I think, uh, is that about it? I am ready. I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, thank you so much for having me. And thanks for the chat, guys. That was awesome. And uh, Scott, maybe we'll see you in, at Adepticon. Um, yeah, and also, if anybody wants any of the new Build, Paint, Play merch, it's up on the Alpha Omega website. Uh, I'll make sure that Dave and I put a link up uh, on our page, too, so you can see it. Yep. Um, we're doing pre-orders. Dave Dave will have some stuff when he's there at the show, but I think he just is going to be having the stuff he's wearing. But you can see it. You can touch it. And then... You can, I mean, ask, ask Dave. Dave. You should ask Dave first. But always consent <laughs> first. Yeah, I'll always get permission. But uh, but yeah, but you can pre-order it. We'll send stuff out, and then I'll do another batch once we get once we get into December. I'll put up like hoodies and stuff because a bunch of people have asked about them. Yep. Uh, nice. But that's probably it. Uh, Dave, are we are we ready? We are. Okay. Are we ready? Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. To, huge thanks to Terrace. Uh, and we will see you guys next week. And as always, don't forget to build, paint. Play. Shut up and sit down.
Shut up and sit down.